Father, we thank you for giving to us the ability in every way to live fully for you. Ambron just say, break down, oh God, we pray in Jesus' name, by your mighty power, the power, the hindrances of doubt, the hindrances of unbelief. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that there be a contrast between what it means to operate by the Holy Ghost and be led by vain imaginations. Father, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that everyone would come to understand what it means to be led by the Spirit versus to be led by circumstances and situations that surround us. Oh, Father, we pray tonight that the gift of faith will strike every person's heart. <laughs> that the working of your mighty power will overcome every person's life, that the wonderful realms of your joy, hallelujah, Amen. they come down from heaven above, they come right out of the realms of the Spirit, they come out of the innermost parts of our being, hallelujah, would, be, would overwhelm each person that gathers here in this place. That there would be no, there would be no other mindset in anyone except for that of touching heaven. Hallelujah. There'd be no other purpose for anyone to be here other than to be refreshed in your presence, to be touched by your glory, to understand how to hook up Holy Spirit with you 24 hours a day. Hallelujah. How to hook up with you in our dreams even. How to hook up with you, God, in, in, in the midst of disaster. How to hook up with you, Father, and rely upon you for everything. Hallelujah. to rely upon you to do the things we think we know how to do. Much more to rely upon you for the things we don't know how to do. Father, we come to you for counsel. We come for, to you for guidance, Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray tonight in Jesus' name that every person would know how to hook up in such a way with you, Lord, that they can redeem the times. That they can part, be a part of the redemption of the times. Redeeming the times. Hallelujah. Speaking in themselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs by the Holy Ghost. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Father, we pray that everybody will see the exciting life, that they'll, they'll escape the monkey trap and come on over into the exciting life and roam free, hallelujah, in the Holy Ghost. And understand, it's some kind of pressurized life to live the life in the Spirit. It's the glorious life. It's the abundant life. Father, all these lies that Satan's telling, live, giving people all these reasons not to function, operate in you, to be trapped in something that's not of your making. Father, tonight we pray for breakthrough, breakthrough in our lives. Insight, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Revelation, the knowledge of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we pray tonight that everybody would be happy with everybody in the place. And then they start being happy with themselves. Hallelujah. I'm happy with you to begin with. The starting place. Happy with you, Lord. I'm happy with you. Happy in you. Uh -huh. And happy by you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for strengthening us by the Spirit in our inner being. Hallelujah. Thank you, O oh God, for strengthening us and equipping us, giving to us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of you so we can see. O oh God, thank you, Lord, that we can see. It's a wonderful thing to be able to see. We navigate quite much better. Hallelujah. Being able to see and everything. <laughs> oh, God. May we not be deaf and mute. Oh, God. Be able to hear. Uh, hear what you're saying. Speak what you're saying. Oh, God. Thank you, Father, for a miracle that every blind, deaf, mute, crippled person will be healed tonight. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
Father, I pray tonight in Jesus' name that everybody in this place would get detached from everything that's around them. Detached from the world, detached from all the stuff they hold as important. And just go ahead and die and go to heaven tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bozeraya. De remain de kishtepe. Le manga lisha poro nombro vativitist. Le membre beki yashi perdea. Tele menema se teve vive divistesi. Hembre bebeshte brive divist. You know, if someone came to me and said, if someone came to me and said, listen, you got to get out of the building, you can't be on the property anymore. You know what I'd say? It's bothered business. Somebody got, if I went home tonight and there was, I was locked out, I said, you can't, you can't stay in this house tonight. You know what I would say? It's father's business. It's fine. No worries. No problem. If we, if we went out and we found out that our, our cars were all blown up, nothing would work, I'd say, fine. There's no problem. No problem. It's father's business. It's his business. Some people ask me all the time, what are you going to do about this? I'm not going to do nothing about it. It's Papa's business. Well, what are you going to do about that? I'm not going to do nothing about it. It's father's business. I'm totally detached. It has nothing to do with me. And the only way you can ever start moving in faith and start functioning, flowing, and operating the gifts of the Spirit is when you get totally detached. Because that's the moment in which you can allow now God to take over because He's not going to step into the realm of your need. He's going to interact in the realms of faith. People want Father to come and interact in the realms of their doubt. He will not any more than He will participate with sin. He will not. He will not. Just might as well just go ahead and just try to convince yourself. They ain't going to come into the midst of your doubt, your unbelief, your problems, your issues, your confusion, all that. He ain't going to be there. He's opened up the door so we can come in where he's at. Amen. <laughs> That's good enough. So you just have, everybody has to make up their mind. You know, oh, God, oh, God. I hear people praying prayers in the midst of doubt. Father's not even anywhere near that. He's the Holy Ghost not anywhere near that. All the complaint, all the imagination, all the crazy stuff that it takes Folks, a lifetime to just grow to one simple step in God. You can't act like a baby and function like a mature man in God. You know what? Or a woman in God. It's just real simple. It's just time to mature. It's time to just recognize. You're going to have to be, you're going to have to understand how to be detached. Otherwise, the things of this life, the things of this world, Satan will play upon it. I'm going to tell you right now, imaginations will quickly take you to demonic oppression. If people can understand that, imagination will quickly take you to demonic oppression. You know, I, I, I often wonder, I know how, that, how much I need prayer and praise every single day because what happens is I touch heaven and there's, a, there's this flow of heaven and it breaks off the things that would, that this circumstance, situations would try to affix themselves to my attitudes, to my emotions, to my thinking. And I think about people who go, all, go days without touching heaven, maybe weeks, maybe even months. No wonder folks are in a mess. And the only possible way that you and I can live out this life in God is by the miracle walk in the Holy Ghost. There's a miracle walk in the Holy Spirit. And I'm here tonight to convince you of the miracle walk in the Holy Spirit. You're going to have to shut everything down about you to have it. And that comes at, see, that comes at a high price, doesn't it? It shouldn't. But in the realms of deception, it comes at a high price. In the realms of reality, all you did was give up nothing for everything. It's hard, to, you know, it's hard to convince people of that because you run all day long operating in the realms of your natural ability, what you think you know how to do, and you're doing it all wrong. Even though people around you tell you and saying that you, you're doing it right, from God's perspective, you're doing it wrong. Huh? I don't care if you are the excellent, most excellent mechanic there is on the face. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> you're just doing it wrong. Huh? You, you get the oiled-up, geared machine that runs off of some fossil fuel that's polluting the atmosphere. You're doing it all wrong. That's the best you can do. It's just barely above a transition from a square wheel to a round one. I mean, come on. And we're just so boastful and so prideful about all the things that we're doing. Come on, people, stop it. Please. The Lord's just calling us to detach ourselves from all this mess. You say, well, this thing, that thing, the other thing. Forget about all those things. It's really only about you and how you feel about Father. I mean, tonight we'd just like to ask you in an honest and sincere interview how you feel about God today. We'd like to ask you in an honest and sincere interview how it is that you feel about the Holy Ghost today. Have you even talked to Him? Has there been any manifestation <laughs> of His glory in your life? 
I mean, if I could get honest, get all the pair out all the religious and all the whatever else, you know, and let everybody get real sober, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, and to tell a fib is a lie, to tell a falsehood is a lie, and to say, look, tell me the truth. You know, what's your interaction with God like? How real is he? How much has he been allowed to operate in your life? If I could look at you and say, how much can you really do of yourself? And you, you're not going to get real honest. And then I said, well, how much did you do of yourself? <laughs> and then we have to try to pair those up and see if they match up. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I can do nothing to myself. But all day long, I did everything by myself. <laughs> you know, give me a break. That's just religion. You know, that's just something wrong with the brain cells. <laughs> And a preacher told me today, he said, you know, the Lord just told me today, he said, the Lord just told me it's time for me to start relying on some brain cells. I said, I started laughing. I just started laughing. I said, that's really the truth. I mean, goodness gracious. Before we ever even start moving in the wisdom of God, we're going to have to jumpstart what brain cells we got. And reality of it is, is what brain cells we have will tell us to look to the word of God, look to the spirit of life. Holy Ghost, come lead us and guide us in all truth. He's come lead us and guide us into all life, abundant life. So you know what? When you're having a bad life, it's because you're not being led. When things aren't going right, when things aren't being, come on. There is a promotion to be had tonight. There is a spirit of wisdom and revelation to enter into. There is an interaction with Father and encounter with Him. The word, he, he's able to take control of your dreams. He's able to take care of control of every part of your life. Oh, sekara masaterity. Lombrosa tiki la masa Hallelujah. There is a place to live in divine health. Huh. There is a place to live in divine wealth. Huh. There is a place to live in divine blessings. There is a place to where that you can, I mean, you can turn people from darkness to light. And not to play patty cake games all your life, you know. Jesus. We die, and finally, this is before we breathe out our last breath. We get it. Now it's over. We're now we're 95 years old. Oh. I've been living by imaginations. <laughs> That's why I've been able to move in the gift of faith. You want to move in the gift of faith, you've got to be converted, become like a little child. And now you're just sitting before the Lord saying, Lord, I'm not looking to figure out what I can do. Speak to me. I'm here ready to go. And then boom, he drops you in the gift of faith and says, you're going to do this and that and the other. And you don't have a clue about how you're going to do it. You just got to get the faith to do it. Think about this. This is how God operates. You don't have a clue about how you're going to do it logistically. You don't have a clue. You just got to get the faith to do it. And then immediately you set out to be led by the Holy Ghost and He shows you how to do it. Whether it's take a nation, reach a lost, someone who's lost on a one-to-one -one basis. Whether it is to see finances come into the kingdom. I mean, look, there's just too many people that have become billionaires just out of just their own human effort. What is it? What can happen when God's people begin to touch the realms? of the Spirit and the gift of faith. And now let the Holy Ghost give them wisdom and insight and let God do something in that dimension. I mean, there's people who've done, have had great discoveries in the natural. What happens when somebody touches the realms of the Spirit and has a wisdom and, that belongs only to the realms of heaven and now begins to move in an insight and an authority in heaven where the miracles can flow, gifts of healing can work on the whole other dimension. And you say, well, listen, this is what God's doing. This is the reality of Jesus Christ and who he is and the person of Christ Jesus is real. He's real. And I want him to be made known through my life. I want, it, I want these things of the kingdom of God to become a living reality in my life. That isn't going to happen because you just come sit in church. I'm happy that you're here in church tonight. It ain't going to happen because you came sit in church. It's going to happen because you demand it. You won't, you're, not, you're not willing to be happy with your life that is less than that. You know, when, and it, to, to be, maybe the better word is to be satisfied with a life that's then less than the full revelation of the power and the glory of Jesus Christ in your life. The person of the living God has come to be revealed through you and me. This is the gospel. He died for us at Calvary for the purpose of making us a new creation to come and live out his life through you and me so that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the fullness of the power of God might be manifested in our life. Well, there's some fundamental, if you want that, then there's some fundamental principles. You've got to go ahead and start. You've got to learn somehow. You've got to become important. I mean, this stuff is as easy as one plus one equals two. It is that easy. 
But it's just, it's, it's, we make it aloof from us. It's not a reality to our life. It's not a practical application. It's not important. It doesn't find its place of importance in our life. Therefore, we can't ever get it. It's like, oh, well, remind me of that again. What was that again? Huh? It's like the kid that didn't want to do the, you know, to work in the backyard. Turn this down. Don't turn me up until I tell you to turn me up. Okay, just keep it lower. Just come under the authority of somebody giving you instruction, okay? That just, that really helps. And because that ultimately then equates into me coming under the authority of the Holy Spirit giving me instruction. Huh? I am, when ultimately when we become so set that we don't want any mixture. Huh? <laughs> None. <laughs> uh, one preacher said to me just recently, he said, you know, if you take a little bit of what's in a poopy diaper and put it in your ice cream, your ice cream's not any good anymore. <laughs> I said, Bubba. I said, Bubba. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I said, Bubba, I'm going to tell you right now. If they sit beside each other, the ice cream's not any good anymore. Okay? Huh? And he said, but it's going on all the time in the church. It's constantly going on in the church. This is a preacher talking. This is a Holy Ghost preacher full of the Spirit being used by God to reach thousands, tens of thousands of people right now. And it's true. I mean, I'm, I've got to say, <laughs> oh, Jesus. When is somebody going? When is the mixture going to end? When is it that we're going to we see? Huh. We value our life on a level that we actually equate it equal with Father. At best, no, not in our thinking realm, not in what we're saying, but in our deeds. And the Father says, what Father says is our deeds are more important than anything else. So we, somehow we've got to start fearing and trembling. Somehow we've got to become in awe of what he's given to us. So faith can impact us to say, wait a minute, God's on the inside of me. What am I talking about? I'm worried about something. What was, what was I worried about? God's here. <laughs> I mean, God can do anything. He can't God do. So, so somebody says, well, what are you going to do? I'm going to go do this and I'm going to do that. Why? Because this is the gospel program. I'm not going to go do this and go do that because I'm seeking my own purposes in life. I'm going to go do this and I'm going to go do that because ultimately it results in the loss being reached. People being established in the kingdom of God. The name of Jesus being glorified. At least people, have, if they're not reached, at least they've got an, they've got an, they had an opportunity. They're, they're not going to go into eternity without God said, I never even knew. No one, I never had an opportunity. I never had an encounter. There's people that are saying right now, you go to them and talk to them about Jesus, they're going to say, leave me alone. Well, you know, they had an opportunity. Hopefully, that is if you are able to manifest Jesus, which you're not able to so long as, you know, you're mixing it. And I know that yourself and the interest of yourself can never be compared to the poopy diaper. I understand that. But it is. I understand that. But it is. I recognize the problem here. I know, I know the breakdown in communication. I know why that we say the same thing for so many years and it's just not heard. I understand. I understand life's complications. I understand the pull of all those things that people say are important on your heart. But if we could, if we could press in and say, Lord, I, I want an encounter with you. Lord, I want to touch heaven. I want to understand how to touch heaven. I want to, under, I want to understand what opportunities do I have in my life right now to touch heaven? Do I have any at all? Does the guy who's in, living in Kashmir that's in prison right now that no one gets to hear about and it was one of the most radical nations against the gospel, anybody who preaches Jesus, one of the most radical nations right now and they just bury you in prison and there's nobody there to tell your story and there's no, there's no news media and there's nobody to shout at because Christians are so few and far between and there's no word getting out and you're just all alone. Is there any opportunity for that person to touch heaven? Is there any? Probably more than there is for you stuck in this world in the United States of America with all of its self-interest. It's all about amplifying who you are and making you great and wonderful and so important and able to do so many things but never really get much done. Hello? But never really get much done. We ought to all just, we ought to all tonight just sell everything that we have and take off. We ought to all just basically get out of the monkey trap and go, roam free in the Holy Ghost tonight, tonight, tonight. Oh, that's scary. Where will we sleep? 
What, where, where, what will we eat? How will we be clothed? God expects. No, God don't expect nothing but for you to obey him. I mean, for me, that sounds great. Let's just do it. I'm not, you know, people got my impression, oh, we got to do music. We do? No. It's, it's, all I want to do is worship. I don't want to do no song. I'm going to worship. Oh, no, we got to do this. Oh, we got to do that. Oh, we, oh, we got to tell people about Jesus. Don't tell them. <laughs> it won't go good. It'll be a bad representation. It'll just be another false witness. Um, because the power of the Holy Ghost is the only one. It's the power of the Holy Ghost and Him alone that can give us the ability to do the most simple things in God to bear witness of Jesus, to tell who we are in God. Everybody's got a testimony. Sure, I hear people say this all the time. Everybody's got a testimony. Fine, yeah, you do. But you can't give it but by the power of the Holy Ghost. And it be of any value. And so we're just all going to sit around for the rest of our life and wait for a day to come? Or are we going to lay hold on a day and have the day? I'm going to lay hold on a day and have a day. Hallelujah. You know, so much of dealing with doubt and so much of dealing with unbelief and so much of dealing with fear and so much of dealing with the, with the obstacles and the circumstances is learning how to cut off imaginations. And as soon as they're cut off, you know how to put them down. I mean, because God's, the authority of God's power is focused on imaginations and thoughts. And until you understand how to let the Word of God have supreme place over your life, how to let Him rule you, and I'm telling you right now, it don't come easy. It's a force of your will. It is, it is, it is the most intense thing you've ever done. You can't, you can't even do it. Humanity, a human being cannot do it. I don't care how how intelligent or how great the force of will or discipline. They can't do it. Huh? Only by the power of the Holy Ghost can you do these things. And then they're going to happen offline of us. It's where we just give ourselves, Father, this is what I want to do. I want to I wanna smash imaginations. I want to blow up the speculation realm. Huh? The prediction realm. It's all negative. It's all demonic. And as soon as you get active in it, Demon oppression comes. And now you don't know how to touch heaven? Then you're stuck. And then how long are you going to be stuck? I'm going to tell you right now. I mean, listen, you just listen to me. Every day, God empowers me to break off the strongholds and the things that Satan would try to affect, attach to my being. That doesn't happen by me just sitting around on the couch or by me just running, doing my stuff and doing my job and whatever else. That happens as an active participation of knowing how to touch heaven by the power of the Holy Ghost. Knowing how to step over into a flow that he has given to us by the Spirit. And now all of a sudden, you begin to live an entirely different life. People go to bed with a problem, wake up first thing in the morning with the problem, and run all day with the problems. And now we've got to have a break tonight here on Wednesday night. And I want you to have a break. I just want you to have a break from your problems. I mean, at some moment in time, you're just going to have to lay down your burdens down by the riverside. And, of course, for me, the riverside is the rivers of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Aha. The streams of heaven. Hallelujah. So that someday, maybe someday, maybe someday, huh, and, 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 and I pray tonight would be that day. I would pray that today would be the day. God wants today to be the day. <laughs> Father wants such radical events to happen in your life tonight, spiritually. On a very positive side. You know, very radical events could happen to you today, tonight on a negative side. Change your life forever. Somebody, a loved one could die. You could die. People think they're going to live forever. You're not going to live forever. You're going to die. I'm going to die good. I'm going to die the, die, I'm going to die the death of the righteous. I ain't die sickness and pain laying on some old hospital bed all plugged up with all kinds of tubes running up and down my body. And man going to usher me into this. And man, oh, man's going to usher me into this next world. Huh? I'm planning on, I'm making, I'm sowing into how I'm going to die. Hallelujah. More importantly, I just want to be transfigured. Hallelujah. I want to be, I want to be transfigured in the 
translated and <laughs> changed and <laughs> instant in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. I want that. We, we're sowing into every dimension. We're so spiritually, we sow into every dimension of what's going to go on in our tomorrow. What's going to go on in the next 30 minutes? I'm sowing into what's going to happen in the 30, next 30 minutes right now. I'm sowing into what's going to happen in the next hour. What's going to happen tonight, later on tonight? What's going to happen tomorrow? And so on. It goes every, from hour to hour, from day to day, from week to week. Our great need is to grab a hold of the Word of God and read the Word of God with all simplicity and hear Father say, this is what I want you to do, and our response to be, okay, Lord, I will, because you've empowered me and you've given me the ability. And Holy Spirit, now I trust you. And now that becomes a relationship, see? It becomes a living relationship because you can't do a single thing he's wanting you to do of yourself. And now it's a dependency and it's a, and it's a singular relationship. Okay, Lord, show me how to do this. Okay, Father, I've just come up against this brick wall with someone or this you know, relationship problems. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your wisdom. And, and then you know how to get filled because otherwise you could just be speaking in the air. If you're not praying by the prayer of faith, you're speaking in the air. If it's not something that's, that is truly a relationship realm. See, people want God to come out of faith. He will not come out of the realms of faith any more than he will come out of the realms of holiness. People want God to leave the realms of faith and come over into their doubt. That's like asking God to leave the realms of holiness and come over into wickedness. If you could just get this, if you could just understand this, everything begins to change. It begins to take on a dynamic of a new way that now you can daily give yourself to and you can mature in. Huh? How many of you know practice doesn't make perfect? Because you'd be practicing it wrong. And I'm watching as people practicing walking with God wrong. Huh? <laughs> you don't walk with God promoting yourself. Hello. <laughs> Lesson, hopefully, number one. You've got to deny yourself. Hallelujah. Lambona mera sikina. Le membre suse beke de shipira. Lara sutere beke sist. Loto kono kievra ta sipilo. Sikanda be eresia tisiata. Membre vetus seni for katusi. Labarana se prepako ya shikana na beki. Diarna ta sipi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Rabo sekere shibala nea pataya. Le rebe de kishi pres. See, I, 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 came to, I came early on in my relationship with the Lord to realize that I could not offer any song or praise that was acceptable to Father. And it might have been more radical for me just because of, you know, being a musician and you know, I, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, my, I don't know. Not, not, and that's not necessarily the truth. I believe God gives revelation. It came very clear to me. When the Lord made it very clear to me, you want to worship me? You can only worship me by the Holy Ghost. And you can only worship me in truth. And what does that look like in truth? For me to worship God in truth, what does that look like? It has to look like the holies of holies. It has to look like me being in the holies of holies and what that's going to do to me. Because now I'm, in truth, really, truly interacting with God. Not a figure, not an idea, not a religious concept, not a <gasps> death cross, death cross. <clears throat> Where I first saw the light, light, <clears throat> half-hearted, you know, distant, not, heart's not in it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Nobody sings that way passionately. I sing passionately. I'm passionate. I believe a person who can't sing can be passionate. Huh? Amen. People can't sing, you can dance. <laughs> you can move around. And passionate isn't necessarily loud. Huh? Effective prayers are not necessarily long. They're just so real. They're so deep. They're so, they're so 
It's so true. It's, it's, it's an interface with God. It's an encounter with the living God. It is so hard to break people out of religion. It's so hard to break people out of ritual. It's so hard to break people out of false ideas and fantasies, especially when you think about it. If we lived all of our day, just imagine, we live, let's just say we lived, let's just speculate, we live 72 hours tending ourselves, doing our own thing. It has nothing to do with heaven. It has nothing to do with the will of God. It has nothing to do with the word of God. It has nothing to do with the assignment of God that he has upon our life. And then all of a sudden we come into the meeting and now we're going to switch that over into a spiritual realm and it just ain't going to happen. I mean, it, it, God in his love and his mercy will allow it to happen, you know, as, an, as it were, just an encounter. But it isn't going to be very deep. But what happens now if we continually give ourselves to the manifest presence of the Lord, where we, don't even, where we won't even be without it? You know, there's a lot of people that sit in churches today, they don't even know what that means, manifest presence of the Lord. They don't even know what that means. Because all they've ever known is their sound of their own voice singing, a preacher preaching, you know, got to get up and give in the offering or just, you know, don't even have to get up. Most people don't even have to get up. And they just sit there. Drop it into the basket as it goes by. I mean, they get everything. I mean, so what is it? There's one or a deacon that come over and open their mouth and sing for them. <laughs> it reaches the end of his pocket, pull out the money, so they don't even have to do that. You're just like, give on your behalf. Jesus, help us. <laughs> what happens if we just get so fed up with that? Huh? What, if we, what happens if we get so real? Not surreal. So real. Do you know when you've been talking bad about other people, it shows on your face? Did you know that? Do you know it actually shows on your lips when your lips have been involved in speaking evil and guile? Did you know that? Did you know that you can make your face look really pretty in the mirror and you just be as ugly as sin in the spirit? Huh? It's terrible, terrible having demons popping outside of your ear. Huh? Coming crawling in and out of your nose, that kind of thing. I mean, you no, know, really. He said, oh, that's too graphic. I mean, it's not really that bad. He said, oh, yeah, it's worse than that. You got to take a look sometime. Huh? It'd be better to have the gift of discerning a spirit so you can see yourself after the manner of the spirit and know yourself after the manner of the spirit. Then you're going to look at yourself different in the mirror. Huh? Then if there's any lust, it's going to stand out. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna drop to your knees. If there's anything that's going to happen in the midst of the church, if there has to be a returning of, of Holy Ghost conviction. That isn't going to happen unless there's the people who want the... They want to live in the awesome reality of the presence of the living God. Their whole divine, their whole purpose is to live out the divine plan and the divine call. And so they fundamentally begin to cooperate with God on the very basic level. Uh, you know what defiles? How many of you know what defiles your whole being? How many of you know what defiles your whole being? Huh? What comes out your mouth? It defiles your whole being. How many people are going to go and, you know, you think about <laughs> some of the stuff that you could eat and make you desperately sick. Some of you say, I'm not going to go over there and eat that one taco stand over there in Tijuana. <laughs> Everybody I know, they were in the hospital for several weeks after they ate over there. <laughs> uh -huh. I had one brother say to me, he said one night, we were in this dark place in Nepal. He said, well, I'm going to go downstairs and eat because I got the bugs already. <laughs> I said, that sounds like the church. I mean, it was not a, that wasn't a kitchen. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you right now, our bathrooms are cleaner than that thing. It was, it's terrible. It was, it, I've been telling you, you know, when you got creatures running around of every sort and size that are all associated with filth, you can't call that a kitchen. Why then, why then would we then defile ourselves with our mouth? Why then would we defile? Why then would we somehow be unwilling to cooperate with the very simplest things concerning the love of God and how to, how to learn how to walk in that love fundamentally, learn how to express those things that God has commanded of us? And he says to us, he says, he tells us very clearly, he says, for us to love one another as he's loved us. Well, we say, well, I, 
I can't do that of myself. I need power to do that. He tells us, tells us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Well, I can't do that of myself. I, I, need, to, I need the Holy Ghost to do it. Now, then do you just abdicate and put on hold? Because all Holy Ghost, you got to do that. And I'm busy right now. Because you know what we got to do. We got all these problems we got to deal with. We got all these things we got to take care of, and all this stuff we got to fix. What stuff? How much of it is real? Huh. A man of God called me up last week and he was telling me about these things, this thing and that thing, the other thing. I said, Wood stubble and hay. I said, Wood stubble and hay. I said, Wood stubble and hay. I know it looks great, I know it's, but it's wood stubble and hay. How much wood stubble and hay do we just do we think is gold, precious things? Because even the even the most astute, as it seems, some of the most some of the people who seem to have the, the, the more insight in the things of the spirit get involved in wood stubble and hay. How much how much of our life really is obedience to the commands of the Lord Jesus Christ, participation with the Holy Spirit? This is one dimension of where it can happen in the midst of the church. But it isn't going to happen when people live their own lives outside the church. And then they come in. It's just going to be a very small, it can be a very small moving. And, and then all, all, all of a sudden, be a small group of people that will be able to join together. Then, you know, everything else will be perception based on perception there'd be very little encounter now what's going to what's going to make the difference here of whether or not you're going to be in one category or, or the other it's going to be the determination of your will the choices of your heart to say lord this is what you want me to do i'm going to do it I know that I can only do it by your, by your anointing, and you show me how to touch into the realms of the anointing. How many, you know, because if I asked tonight, for the most part, how many of you have been baptized in the Holy Ghost? Everybody would raise their hand, but hold up. If you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, that means you have received the Holy Ghost without measure, and now you know how to draw on Him for every dimension of everything that you need. Thus you are without excuse of not continually walking in the love of God and walking after the mind of Christ. So it really then does come down to the reality that we choose out of our own will that we're going to do it our own way and leave it for whatever other. Because God knows and God understands. God don't know and understand half the stuff that people are says he knows and understands. I know what God knows and understands. He wrote it in his word for us to read. The rest of God doesn't know or understand so far as we know. Huh? Because it's arguing from silence. We know what God knows and understands. He revealed it in his word. Especially what is it concerns you and me. We know what he desperately wants tonight. He wants us to gather together in this place with no sin and transgression, with no evil, with no thoughts of, of sedition or strife or accusation or finger pointing or any kind of thing that would be in any way viewed as division or strife in any dimension. Otherwise, the feast is completely ruined. It's ruined. There's poison in the pot. We're not eating poison. How many of you are going to eat poison in the pot? We're not having it. Throw it out, dump it out. Poison in the pot. Huh? Little leaven leavens a whole lump. Not a little bit. Oh, well, there's just little leaven over there. Oh, God bypassed little leaven, little leaven, leaven, little leaven leavens a whole lump. I mean, what, where do we make the transition where, say, where, where we say, look, Father, I'm, I, look, I'm going to be conformed to your will. I'm not just going to sing about it no more. I'm not going to just have every once in a while a little Holy Ghost shout about it. I'm going to be conformed to your will from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, spirit, soul, and body. And I understand it in very simple terms. It's not abstract terms here, people. The, the, the Lord just makes it, he makes it so easy for us. He makes it so simple for us. And if we participate with, the, with, with him, even the most reproachful people become lovely. Oh, 
But being us, folks in the church, they don't even want to love the lovely. They, they're going to find a problem with the most anointed person because the spirit of strife and sedition exists. Think about it. Every evil thing exists there. That's got to be broken. If we want, you know, I, I was recently just, I was recently asked by a, a man of God for, to write something that is going to be published in his, in his, in his uh, book. And, and as soon as he asked me, the Lord gave me this, and it's just powerful. It, it, it just struck me. It hit me hard. It's for him. It's for me, too. He said, there can never be, the Lord spoke to me and said, and I said this, there can never be a revival until there's a turning to God. God's people have got to turn back to him. They have to return to him. And the Lord gave me some other things to say in there, but just making that simple point. Where do we turn back? Where do we return unto him? And the basic behavior, because Father's talking about basic behavior. He lays a foundation of love that is inescapable. He lays a foundation of love that has, it is inexcusable in God's presence for there to be any other manifestation other than divine love, not kind of love, not like you love. I mean, his love, not human love, his love. Somebody said, well, we can't do that. What do you expect we are? I expect you people that are born of the Spirit, a new creation, given a new heart, and a new spirit, full of the Holy Ghost, baptized in the Spirit. That's what I expect you are. Is that what you expect you are? Oh, good. <laughs> then you recognize that Father's given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. He's given you everything you need. <laughs> if you would just do that, if you would just do that one thing, you would begin to deal with yourself right, left, and center. You would begin to deal with so many imaginations you are not even conscious of them. You're not even conscious of them until you set your heart to do with what God said to do with all that is within you because you will not re allow anything else. That, that is the nucleus of revival. That is the nucleus of the, of the Holy Ghost being freed. He's not going to mix it up with our falsehoods in our lives. No matter how much we justify them and say, well, you know, you don't understand what they did to me or what they were thinking or what they did to so-and-so or who they were 50 years ago. You know, you hear some people tell a story and you think they just happened yesterday and then you come find out it was 20 years ago. <laughs> people live that way. You and I live that way unless we have been liberated by the power of the Holy Ghost and know how to live in Him and walk in Him and move in Him. And there are fundamental principles that is going to make the difference of whether that's a reality or not. And you're going to have to listen and quit making up things as you go along. That might work good in school or on the job. It ain't going to work good in the kingdom. God's going to lay a foundation, and it's going to be accurate, and it's going to be right, and it's going to be real. <laughs> it's going to be from the heart. <laughs> it isn't going to be pretend. It's not for showmanship. Or not like a, it's not a dog and pony show every Wednesday night, Sunday morning, and Sunday night. You know, <laughs> It's a living reality of who God is living on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Not make believe, put on a happy face. Some people are good at that. Other people aren't good at that. <laughs> Whatever my wife is feeling, she wears it. She has no guile. There's no guile in her. She can't pretend. And so, you know, I sat down and I gave her some counsel one day. I said, baby, you're just going to have to keep yourself in the Holy Ghost. Because you're not able to put on a happy face when you're not feeling good. Huh? And Father's called you to, to radiate with his presence as a person who's a spiritual leader. Radiate with his presence. How many of you would like to be a spiritual leader to a lost and, and, and dying world? I know every one of you. And there's these, 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 there's these basic principles. There's these things that you and I are going to have to come to come to terms with. There's things that... We're going to have to become intolerant to. You know one of the things that you're going to have to become intolerant to that you do not want to become intolerant to? Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Ha. How many of you think you could answer my question right now? Huh? 
the things that you're going to have to become intolerant to that you do not want to become intolerant to. What is it? Me, the self. Opinion. The self, your opinion. That's it. That's it. And when you really grab a hold of that and you know that and you're able to deny that and say, I don't want that, that's not true, that's false, that's not reality, because that's hard to convince ourselves because, oh, we're just, you know, legends in our own mind. You know what I'm saying? We're all brilliant. We're all just like God. We all got photographic memories. When it comes to something that somebody did or recalling a bad situation, we know exactly what was said word for word. You know, it's just, it's a farce. It's, a, it's an illusion. It's a deception. It's such a lie. It's living in deception. You got to ask yourself, how much deception can you have in your life and still be walking in the truth? These are fundamental things we got to deal with and we got to get real serious about it. Because if we don't, we're just going to continue on doing it. You see, you know what I do? As soon as I find something in my life that I don't like, that's wrong, you know what I do? I change. Huh? I change. I mean, we just change. We just, we set a new pattern for ourselves. We change. Tonight, I pray that you'll let God set a new pattern for yourself that you will change. Some of you need to just get, sell it all and move to Angola. Because it needs to be that radical of a change to get, begin to cooperate with God, to get out of the illusion, to get out of the smoke and mirrors, the deception, the lies. Of course, Phil said, don't you ever send me anybody who's got to try to find themselves out here. I said, you know, I just try to, I just, I said, you know, I said, I just try to support people and what they want to do. He said, don't you support nobody that shouldn't come. I said, I know what you mean, man. It's just going to be hell there too. It's hell here and hell there. Who wants to have that reputation about themselves? Nobody. I want to be able to, I want to be able to, to say that, well, I praise God. Don't worry about that. There's nobody like that in this church. You don't have to worry about that here. And so thus we will give, do our best to put you in remembrance of these things so long as we in this tabernacle of God's call upon your life of what he demands of you. He ain't finally going to stand you standing there in front of Father. Well, it wasn't my fault. It was his fault. <laughs> and he's, he's going to believe that? He's thinking, you know what? You're going to be standing in the presence of truth and you won't even say that. You go, You'll be able at that moment in time, because there'll be no delusion there, there'll be no deception there, you'll know it was all your fault. All the people that now that we can deceptively blame, it's everybody else's fault. Everywhere I go, it's all their fault. <laughs> if everybody be leave me alone, I could be just perfect. <laughs> if everybody just get out of my way, everything would be fine. I never have a bad day ever again. You get put yourself by yourself, it's gonna be worse. There's only one who's liberated us and freed us, and he wants to show us how to do it, but we've got to be willing to walk with him and walk in him, and there's rules to it. There's rules to it. There's the rules of life. There's the laws of the spirit of life that are in Christ Jesus. And you can't just go violate him right, left, and center. You know, we, God gives us all time to grow. We're all growing in grace no matter who we are, but we better understand that we need to have perfect practice to be perfect. We need to be giving ourselves to doing it the right way if we're going to end up right. We can't do it the wrong way and end up right. We can't, end, we can't do it 50% wrong and end up right unless we are just devoted to learning how to do it right in every way. That means we're going to be wide open for correction and we're going to be desperate for help. And that, that heart before the Lord is going to be led and guided in all truth and we're going to find ourselves being able to quickly learn because he's expedited this program. Hi, the, the disciples was with Jesus for three and a half years and look at what they moved into and he said, I got an expedited program coming down. He didn't say we're going <laughs> to stretch it out and make it longer. No, it's just because we're up against so many lying things going on in the midst of, of the church. Because right now we live in a time where men, the teachings of men are placed higher than the commands of God. The doctrines of men are placed higher than the doctrines of God. 
We live in troublesome times. We live in perilous times. Where men have turned to their own way. They have itching ears. They don't desire the truth. They want only to hear about how good they are. Tell me how good I am. Tell me, don't, don't, I, I, don't tell me what I've done wrong. Tell me what I've done right. Don't correct me. Confirm at me. Well, that would be just fine if you were 100% perfect. And full of God in every dimension that you would need no correction, no instruction, right? But as it is right now, we need a whole lot of correction. And we need a whole lot of instruction. And then we need to have a response to God where we're desperate for it. There needs to be a desperation in our heart for it. The desperation in our heart for it will make every bitter thing sweet. Will make every correction a blessing. Let the righteous smite me. It'll be a strength unto me. There, there, there'll be a whole new disposition about our interaction. There'll be a whole new passion within the sound of our voice. <clears throat> here's, what I, here's what I believe. I believe that if you'll be passionate with God and faithful in the things that he's told us to do, called us to do, that you will ultimately, every one of us, will step in to the full revelation of his glory and of his power within in, in our lives. If there's anything less than that, you won't. Because it's half truth. It's partial truth. You're going to have to transport yourself from where you're at right now into the throne room of God and imagine what you look like when you see him face to face. Imagine what you act like when you see seraphims flying around like they fly and Zoa creatures sitting there looking like they look. Huh? You with me? Yes. Eyes all around. And in their wings too. Nothing escapes them. The glory of the... Whew, the glory of it, the glory of it, the glory of it, the glory of it that touched Isaiah and shook him, though he, be, though he was the prophet of God, though he was, this, though he was the, the righteous man of God that stood before God as his mouthpiece to his generation, yet in that encounter he said, I'm undone. <laughs> though, though Job was in, in God's estimation of things, perfect and righteous and upright, when he had that encounter with God, he said, I am undone, I'm undone, I'm undone. That, because that is reality. That's truth. Truth and reality are equivalent. They are equivalent. And we could say God has called us to come and worship Him in the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Ghost, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, the wellspring that He produces, the rivers that He produces, a supernatural divine power and ability that He will give us if we'll exercise ourselves in it. If we just exercise ourselves in it, just doing it, whatever then that's what we end up with. And our practice is not going to make perfect. Our practice is going to make just that much more rooted and grounded and wrong. You know why? Huh? You have to learn how. you got to learn to quit spinning your opinion. you got to learn how to shut, zip up your mouth. If you want to be able to speak the word of God, otherwise all you're doing is practicing spinning your opinion and declaring what it is that you know within the framework of human understanding and you never get to speak as an oracle of God because it's mixed. It's mixed. I mean, the least thing we could do is just recognize that, we, listen, I'm just talking like a normal man. I mean, I, I probably, probably, probably just leave a sign hanging on yourself, talking like a normal man. <laughs> Every once in a while, Paul had to interrupt himself and say, I'm talking like a, a man now. I'm just talking like this is from me. Otherwise, he'd talk right from heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. What's wrong with living, getting into a realm in God where you're always talking right out of heaven? Where all the words that are coming out of your mouth are the words of life. They're not something that are just conjugations of your own mind of what you think you know about God's word, but it is the living expression of the word of God. God, the Holy Spirit, speaking through you. <laughs> Huh. That's something that the Lord allows us to have. Do you know that? 
It's part of the. It's part of what he's given to us. He's given to us everything he's got. So that we, he said, you know, we can be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might because the Holy Ghost lives on the inside of us. That's the default place for those who want to be led and guided by God. It's not something that's special you got to get. It's something that you've empowered to have. You've been empowered us. And he says you can have this whole armor of God within the whole defensible armor of God and, and offensible armor of God, the whole ability and authority of God, as it were. He says that we have the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, spoken Word of God. It's a spoken Word. It's not the Logos Word. It's the spoken Word of God. What's wrong with it, just doing that? then you're going to have to quit getting angry. You're going to have to quit getting upset. You're going to have to quit fussing at people. You're going to have to quit talking ugly about people. You're going to have to quit pointing your finger, sticking out your, your lip. And I don't know whether that means that you're just really, you know, pouting or whether you're just, you know, there's another way of sticking out the tongue. I really haven't gotten clarity on that. It seems more like pouting to me anyways. <laughs> sticking forth the lip. <laughs> being just ugly, being derogatory towards others, rejecting others. You need not, you know when we tell you go hug somebody, you need to you know you, who you need to go hug? The person you least likely to submit to. The person you find the most problems with. Now, is there anybody in here that finds problems with anyone? Anybody. You find problems with someone. And I know that there are people in here that find problems with other people. And it's just wrong. It's you. It ain't God the Holy Ghost. And as long as that has impact in your life and effect in your life, it's going to keep you from walking in the Spirit and now being able to move in the Holy Ghost and being able to think like He thinks, act like He acts, speak like He speaks, flow like He flows, and have the dimensions of all that God has promised us. We're going to have to quit behaving ourselves as mere men. You're going to have to quit behaving yourself as you've been taught to behave yourself through all the role models you have that are in an earthly realm. You're going to have to now learn how to follow Jesus, be conformed to His image, be baptized like he's baptized. Move like he moves. Walk under the authority that he walks under. That's something you give yourself to, and when you begin to give yourself to it, all of a sudden you recognize how much you're not doing it. How much you're walking around, prancing around in your own frustration again. <laughs> it's tactic to live like that. It doesn't help nobody. Pacing back and forth in the frustration and the anger and the... You know, the upheaval. Yuck. Who wants, does anybody want to live like that? Did I do a good job with that one? Did I make it really look, did I make it look really bad? I should have crossed my eyes and pigeon-toed and been a little bit more bow-legged while I did it. Just to make it look really ugly. Because it's just ugly. He, he's come, God's come to beautify us. He's come to clothe us. Whew, hallelujah. We give ourselves to walking in this love. We give ourselves to walking in God. We give ourselves to walking in this way to where we say, look, you know, Lord, it doesn't matter. You will be done. I'm here for you. you. You put me through whatever fire you want to put me through. You put me through whatever trying you want to try me with. Lord, I'm going to stand here and bless you and praise you because I know that you have purposed me to come into a place of divine power and glory. You've purposed me to live out the very life that you have. And whatever it takes for me to be able to do that, you got me every part of me, oh God. And then there has to be a passion because truth is going to hit you about time. Things start going sideways for you. Ha! Ha 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 ha! About time you look like your life is a, a, a rain, a, you know, a, 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 a train wreck, right? You're like, whoa, God. <laughs> Truth has come to bear. Huh? What happens when we let God be God? What happens when we believe that God is involved in the very details of our lives? To the point, I mean, you talk about just getting ex almost, you would think it's an exaggeration, but it's not. I numbered the hair on your head. He's involved in that. I've kept, I've kept all your tears in my bottle. Nobody loves you like that. You don't even love you like that. Huh? 
I must admit, there's sometimes I'm praying for people and tears start hitting me and I kind of back off and wipe it off. We can kind of find it like, you know, almost, we can almost equate tears to snot. I mean, I'm just trying to make a point here. Okay? Are you, I'm trying to make a point. Father collects us. He loves us like that. He loves us like what he did at Calvary. This is unimaginable. We, we, somehow, we're going to have to get our hearts wrapped around this and step out of the religion and into the reality. She'll be fine. She's just getting quickened. The reality is passionate about it. The reality of it is laying hold on. The religion just let it slide, just on cruise, coasting. Oh, yeah, praise God, I'm saved, amen. It's, it, you, you go and you start evangelizing on the street, you know, and just do an interview. Do you know Jesus is your personal Savior? The majority are going to be like, yeah, I go to church. I go to church, I go to church, I go to church, I go to church. I mean, I, one, one group gave a statistic that was, you know, that more than 80%, I think it was something like that, more than 80% of Americans are Christians on their way to heaven. <laughs> We're in the midst of full-blown revival around here. And the reality of it is Satan is getting away with all kinds of things he's not, allowed, not even have any right to do. Satan is advancing his cause and his kingdom on a scale that's dwarfing what the church is doing. And we're going to have to get passionate about it. We're going to have to understand the, the principles of change because otherwise we'll be directing our attention over here thinking that this other thing is the principle of change when in reality the foundation is wrong. When we laid the foundation according to the way that Christ Jesus laid it. And now we're willing to do the things that he simply called us to do. He made it so simple. Somebody said, what does it mean to be about the, father, the, 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 the Father's business? I, I can t tell you very plainly and, and accurately what it means to be about the Father's business. Jesus declared that to us when he was 12 years old. He was there teaching and ministering in Father's house, being about Father's business, declaring the things of the kingdom of God to those who were there in the Father's house has been about Father's business. He made it very simple. Come follow me. Come do what I do with the same kind of abandonment, with the same kind of purpose and passion. Deny yourself. Forget about what you want to do with your life. So what if that really is the criteria to make heaven? What if what Jesus said is the means by which you're going to be judged. What if there is no latitude of disobedience? There's means for forgiveness for those who want to change and get it right, but there's no latitude for continual disobedience to self-justify, which is self-righteousness. To say, oh, I'm doing the master's business. You, can't, I, you and I can't do the master's business without being baptized in the same Holy Ghost. We've not been called to another ministry. We've been called to his ministry. It's an amazing blessing. Think about that just a minute, people. We've not been called to another ministry. We've been called to his ministry to do it his way. Therefore, fundamentally, there's got to be a deep longing and a deep passion for change. Because if you guys tonight believe that you stepped into the same fullness of the baptism of the Holy Ghost that Jesus had, somebody has lied to you. Because you haven't. Hello. There has to be changes made in our life. We play, your mind will play tricks on you. You have been given the same Holy Ghost, the same privilege, the same opportunity. It's a leveling floor. There's no big super anointed people elected by God to be super anointed people and a, and a bunch of, you know, little, you know, minor anointed people, just a little bit anointed people elected by God to be little anointed. It's a leveling field. It's just that the only people that has risen above, head and shoulders above, 
or the people who got more passionate and more real about it and begin to allow that ministry and that anointing that has been given to everybody to become effective in their life because they begin to do it. Nothing's going to happen as long as you're sitting at home. Nothing is going to happen so long as you're trying to do it out of your own effort and own strength. It's going to have to, there's got to be a, 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 an event for us. I mean, it's like, I, I think that God in his mercy has got to redefine Pentecost for us. Because we had Pentecost and didn't do Pentecost. We had Pentecost and didn't have the fruits of Pentecost. In many respects. So the Bible's got to kind of rewind the thing for us almost and redefine Pentecost and say, no, 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 no. Pentecost empowers you to go and do what I did. Pentecost fills you with a desire and a passion to fulfill all God's will and purposes <laughs> and empowers you with a divine ability to have and feel the same compassion. Look, not to go, oh no, not to see somebody coming down the street, oh no, I gotta talk to them. Oh God, help me, I gotta talk. <laughs> That's not the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost overwhelms you with the compassion. You're drawn to them. This is fun. This is life. This is like, this is excitement. This is, this is the beauty of heaven going off on the inside of you. This is God doing it. You're not going to sit there and, you know, basically pick your nose and tell them about the weather and how that you found Jesus. Because I'm going to tell you right now, for me, much of what I've seen people doing in terms of supposed testifying, it basically is equivalent. Maybe it's a little worse. trying to sell Jesus like a used car. When man can't do it. Man makes it ugly. Man makes it religion. Man makes it the, the, the worst religion of all. It's the, religion on the, it's the worst, worst presented religion of all religions. When man tries to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hindus do a better job. Buddhists do a better job. Muslims do a better job. Huh? New Age people do a better job. The devil does a better job. Jesus said, you can't, be my, you can't be my witnesses until you're endued with power from on high. He says, you can't be my disciples unless there's a couple of things you're going to do here. It's what he says. And now we, we are entangled, and what we, we have to do is, is we're entangled in a system designed by Satan to keep us so preoccupied and so busy and everybody else so preoccupied and everybody else so busy that all we have time is to do our little preoccupied, busy little job. And maybe it's like slide a couple words in here about the Lord every once in a while when we get a chance. How, do we how does that change? How do we become radical for the kingdom of God? We get set on fire, the Holy Ghost. Then we don't have to try to think it out, try to figure it out. It isn't about becoming guilty. It's about becoming passionate, determined. Huh? Without, listen, let me help you everybody understand something. Without the Holy Ghost, you are a loser. Everybody is. You got a giant, a giant flop, failure. Huh? Our only hope is because we've been given the opportunity of the Holy Ghost to so just get, deal with that. That way you're not going to be disappointed with yourself anymore. Man, it might actually help you deal with this yourself in a better, more effective way. Somebody asked me if I was a motivational preacher. I said, oh, yeah. Why don't you come listen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, we're going to motivate you to... Hate your life in this world. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, Mauda sign it. But you're gonna have to get a glimpse of heaven. There in Suta Ratesi. So remanda se kiste pay. Suter renasta de kiste pera tu safai. Leg le batai. Lata as te pera su chapon. La prasa geres de peraneati. Epra penisi feet. Boko remana se a te. Alla barada satura. Hallelujah. You know, I love how the Lord is how the Lord did this. I love how the Lord did this. Rather than giving us a rule book with a whole list of rules, he said, measure everything by divine love. That's really what he said. He says, because love will work no evil. Love will fulfill everything that I've required. 
Love will fulfill all the law and the prophets. It will, love will ultimately result in you being everything that I've purposed for you to be. Divine love. So now all of a sudden, he makes it really simple for us to have a measure on every action. Now, if we'll stop, here's the, you know, here's the problem. We become so spiritually drained and so spiritually weak because we don't give ourselves to interacting with the Holy Ghost and being filled with the Spirit that we'll get in those situations and we'll justify and convince ourselves that it's okay for the moment. It's okay for the moment to do this. It's okay for the moment to react like this. It's okay for the moment to have this attitude. It's okay for the moment to be things that are clearly contrary to the Word of God. Then, you know what is even worse? Can I tell you what's even worse? Not to identify most of those things as sin, and they're just as bad as any other sin. And so we just make an excuse for ourselves, and we don't fall down on our knees, and we don't confess our sins, and we don't repent, and so we're under a stronghold of a demonic power and don't even know it. Because we never recognized it as sin. We've got an excuse for it. Well, so so did this, and so and so did that, and this bad thing happened, that bad thing happened. And you don't know how hard it is for me. You know, it's just so easy for you. And the story goes, and everybody has at some time thought it. So you are well rehearsed in it, so I don't really need to go into it any deeper. You could write a book. Everybody in here could write a book on it. I want you to write a book on it, label it, entitle it, The Wrong Life to Live. <laughs> then make a commitment to God that you're not going to do that anymore and burn the thing. And say, it's an end. Papa's so good to us. He is so good. Hallelujah. He heals, our, heals all our diseases. That's why I'm disease free. Because I believe that, I practice it, I give no place to all the circumstances and all the symptoms and all the things that come along. I say, a foul thing, it's a lying thing. It has no right. I'm not going to treat it, I'm not going to respond to it. Mm -mm -mm. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Ann and I went and got medical insurance and got so convicted over the whole thing, we just went and canceled it. <laughs> you don't need to do that. You're going to have to get that out of a personal relationship. You do that, you'll probably be on your deathbed the next day. <laughs> no, that's the way the enemy operates. That's the way the enemy operates. People haven't learned how to deal with the wind of opposition. They haven't learned how to deal. See, Satan can come and lay claims on people. Did you know that? Did you know that Satan can call fire down out of heaven? Did you know that? Give me the scripture for it. That's right. Job chapter 1. That's right. Very good. You know he can create a whirlwind. You know? And I can go on and on. And you need to know it because the word of God says it. Not because I said it. Or some other preacher said it. Because you know what the word of God says it. It's good that you can trust people in your life to give you and deliver the Word of God, but it's still good to go ahead and check up because sometimes, you know, we can mess up, say something wrong. Passionate about these things. Passionate about laying hold on the life of Jesus Christ is passionate about His love, which is going to have within it things that we don't like. Servitude. Submission. Somebody said to me, oh, don't say that word. I said, man, I'm going to tell you right now. Say, say cooperation. <laughs> well, let me just inform you that submission is not a dirty word. <laughs> it is a biblical word. Cooperation is stretching it, whether it's a biblical word or not. Obviously, cooperation is, is important, but God calls it to the realm of submission. See, we, we don't understand submission one to another because we don't understand that kind of love. A love of serving one another, servitude. See, servitude and submission, slaves to each other, serving one another in love. We don't understand the kind of love that would promote esteeming everybody better than ourselves. Sometimes I wonder if I would interview people if they esteem anybody better than themselves. 
Do you see it? You just start interviewing and say, listen, before the living God, if you lie, you're going to spend eternity in hell right now. I'm giving an apostolic authority over this thing right now. Now tell me, is there anybody that you esteem better than yourself? Just to try to, you know, get some truth out of them. Yeah, because sometimes we're like, oh, yeah. Well, who? Who is that? And then we begin to say, wait a minute. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I, I, have, been, I have been confronted and discovered. I'm wrong. So now I'm going to start practicing esteeming everybody better than myself. Now what are we doing? We're getting real. We're getting real about participating with fundamental things within the framework of what God describes when he tells us to walk in love. If we could see Father. If we could see Father. Elihu said he was the youngest and so he couldn't speak before the age had finished. The Father spoke last of all. He's servant of all. Jesus said, you see me, you see the Father. Look at me. Look at who I am. Look at how I behave myself. Fault finding, criticism, suspicion, finger pointing, demonic. It's a demonic realm. It's a demonic world. People who do it are oppressed by demo demonic spirits. They're oppressed by demon spirits. There can be a realm in which you do it in imagination. Every one of us do it with imaginations. I do it with imaginations. I deal with them effectively, though, because I know what they are. But I still deal with them. You're going down. You're just, you know, doing, just minding your own business. And all of a sudden, you know, your imagination starts rising up, and you've got somebody hating you, and they love you. you got somebody already talking bad about you. They're all over there talking. <laughs> they ain't done nothing. They ain't done nothing. It's just a lying imagination. See, what, I, what, what, was, what is really wonderful is when you begin to recognize imagination you, for what they are, you throw them down because it doesn't matter regardless of whether they were or were not. You're not going to react to it anyway, so you just cast it down based on that principle. So it doesn't even matter. You with me? You understand what I'm saying to you? And then because you're willing to obey God and do what he said to do and use his power that he has given to us, the God power that he's given to us and the way he wants us to use it, then he allows you to have the gift of discerning of spirits and the word of knowledge. And it's a totally different realm. It's totally contrasted differently. You know, and, and I watch this. I watch this. I, I've watched a lot of people trying to move. And, I, and there was even a movement to try to teach people to move in the word of knowledge by moving in their imagination. Your imagination doesn't give you the word of knowledge. It's an entirely separate realm. It's entirely different. It's entirely different. It has an entirely different expression. It's entirely different comes from an entirely different place, doesn't come out of the same realm, doesn't feel the same way, doesn't think the same way, doesn't, nothing of it's the same. One is purely human, borderlining demonic, and the other one is totally heavenly. One produces confusion and, and produces separation and division and accusation. The other one produces love and glory and compassion and mercy. It's totally different. Different atmosphere altogether. Oh, What do you yield your members to? You must understand this. You can't have these things if you're touching and handling and yielding yourself to unholy things, to practicing things that you don't want to call demonic, but God calls them demonic. You don't want to call them demonic in Empowerment, but Satan, but Satan is the empowerer behind it. And God does. And then when we begin to recognize these things, we can shut down. You foul spirit, oh, I'm tired of you. God, the Holy Ghost, never come and condemned anybody. He never came and produced guilt on anybody. He brings Holy Ghost conviction that overwhelms you with an awe in the presence of God. And then in that awe in the presence of God, you get right quick. Huh? Condemnation and guilt just leaves you wrong. It leaves you wrong. At least you're wrong. You can't get out of it. You're wrong. God, the Holy Ghost doesn't do that. I want you to. I want you to be. You listen tonight. If you could leave out of here, we're going to worship some. I want you guys to worship. I want you to worship. I don't want you to come under any kind of pressure to do music, huh? I don't mind. I don't mind worshiping the Lord with a song that was born two years ago. 
but it's got to have some, it's got to have now life in it. It's got to have now power in it and passion in it. And, and I say that for you more than I say it for musicians because I watch too many people yawn while the worship's going on. You ain't going to be yawning in the, in, the, in the throne room. Sorry, you're just not going to be doing it. Do you believe you could yawn in the throne room? No. I'll tell you right now, you're here to be standing up like this. <laughs> it, is a, it is a frightful thing. It is a terrifying, amazing, exhilarating, overwhelming, glorious thing. God, you are real. I'm afraid too many people are going to have to say, they're going to say that. My goodness, you are real. It's set in church. And we just want to get past that. I want to get past that. I want to, I believe that the Spirit of the Word is going to produce something that, it, that nobody can even imagine. And the reason he's going to produce it is because he's purposed to do it where people are desperate for him and where his word is proclaimed to produce that desperation. Go back and listen to me on tapes 33 years ago and you'll hear me saying the same thing. God's put a word in my mouth. He's called me for a purpose to do something. God has, wants to put a word in your mouth. He's called you for a purpose to go and do something. Father may have already put a word in your mouth and, you, and, and, and you're doing it at some level. Father wants to increase that. He wants to make it effective. Teaches you how to speak that word. Hallelujah. Teaches us. God has expedited this program. He's given us the ability to hook up with what God the Holy Ghost is doing almost instantaneously by this wonderful baptism in the Holy Ghost. And then he's so in his mercy that he, he's just there no matter what's going on, to allow us to connect. This is amazing. Now, the more that we connect, the stronger that it gets. The stronger the connection gets, the stronger the flow gets. The more we allow the manifest presence of God in our life, the more stronger the manifest presence of the Lord will be in our life. The more we give ourselves to interacting with this realm of divine power and glory, the stronger the divine power and glory. It's just like, <laughs> it's just like the arm of the smith. His arm is so strong because of the hammer and the anvil. Come on. It's just no real difference in many respects to this realm. You know, you, you, want, you want to see prophecy develop in your life? Then start prophesying in your room, walking down the street. You got a car, you got most of you commute, you prophesy all the way out to work. Touch the realm of the Holy Ghost until that inspiration hits you. Hallelujah. Does anybody have any worship song at all to begin to even think about starting so that you can start and it not be just this cold slam down on the ground thing that you begin to start it now and you ease on into it? Can any, does anyone? Then, then you can start while I'm still talking. You're getting, I want, you know, you're not going to flow in the Holy Ghost without boldness. If you don't know what you're doing, you can't do nothing, Right? And who's going to tell you what to do? God the Holy Ghost. Control freaks can build huge churches because they control everything that moves. And they want it all just so fixed, all predictable. They want everybody's sermons that they're going to preach two weeks in advance. And they keep everything just knitted, tightly buttoned up. You know, I'm not that. I want people to learn how to flow in the Holy Ghost. If it ain't the Holy Ghost, I don't even want to be a part of it. If it, it isn't the Holy Ghost, it gives me a stomachache. I like get sick. I pray, that, I pray that God will so contrast things in your life that if it's not the Holy Ghost, you get sick. I was sitting watching a, a television program the other night, and... I started getting grieved, and I sat there and still watched it a little bit longer, and I said, what on earth are you doing, man? Does, does the Lord have to come here and slap you across the head?
I want to play another song. Play. Well, what are you doing? What, what, how, first and foremost, I praise God for the contrast. I praise the Lord for the contrast. Do you have the contrast in your life? Are you allowing that contrast to be developed? When you know that, that there's, some, there's something going on beyond just, as it were, a set of rules. Set of Because that could be just religious. Oh, we don't go do this, we don't go do that. I want to see the power of God living and being expressed in your life, in my life, in our lives. I want, to, I want to step into a place where we are taught of the Holy Ghost. And we do what we do, not because somebody has basically, you know, lined out. There's nothing going to watch. There's nothing, going, there's nothing wrong going to watch Cinderella. If you go there and you start watching Cinderella and you start getting convicted in your, in your heart, then you need to go out. I mean, I, I personally don't like to go to the movie theater. I just don't like it. I, I just, if I could preach, I'd be fine. If, it, if I'm going to watch something, I'm going to watch it at home. But if there's, I want to have an interaction with the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost to be able to rebuke me, reprove me. That is never going to happen in your life until you get place of the Word of God rule on you. And you have to give place to the Word of God ruling you on fundamental behavior like love and hate. Hmm? Love and fear. Huh? You have to, you, you have peace or condemnation. If you got, if you listen to me, if you've got condemnation constantly ruling you, messing with you, it's a demonic oppression. Condemnation, condemnation, condemnation. Every time you turn around, you're feeling condemnation, can't do it. That's demonic. That's a demonic power. That is a demon spirit oppressing you. It has a poor power and authority in your life, and you need to get it out of your life. It's just as bad as anything else. It's bringing a separation between you and the Lord, not keeping you from being able to move forward in God. There's therefore now no condemnation that is in Christ Jesus. How can somebody believe that and allow condemnation? Because... You gave place to it or you don't know how to shut it down and Satan's very forceful and you haven't gone, grown strong enough in the Holy Ghost to be able to rise up against it and have authority over it. It has authority over you. Should that not make you fighting mad? It should make you fighting mad. You should get yourself rolled up your sleeves right now and say, we're going to take care of this thing right here, I tell you. We're going to go to work on this thing. <laughs> And it's going to be done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's this is real. This is just this is listen. There's some real basic decisions you need to make about the atmosphere of your life that really springs forth from the attitude of your life which really is all about how you're having a personal relationship with the Holy Ghost. I want you to begin to measure your personal relationship with the Holy Ghost by the disposition of your life. Because God measures it that way. And He says, these are the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. He measures our relationship by the disposition of our life. You tell me fruit's not a measure. Fruit is a measure. <laughs> Fruit is a quantifiable and quantitative measure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father just wants you to look, Father just wants you to trust him. What problem do you have right now? He wants you to trust him. What situation do you have right now? He wants you to trust him. Your imagination run wild and make it worse than it is. What, what thing can you not fix? He wants you to trust him. He wants, you, he wants you to stand and worship him and praise him. Give your life over to him so he can work a miracle on your behalf. Why not make this shift? 
There's a whole lot better way to live. This is a whole lot better way to live. Hallelujah. So, I don't care who you are, where, where you're at, what your problems are, what your disposition has been. doesn't matter. The Lord changes it right now, if you allow it. It's just, it's just right now. You don't have to talk God into it. He's trying to talk you into it. You don't have to make sacrifice. You don't have to bleed. You don't have to do... You, you don't have to be in pain. All you have to do is receive. He's an amazing, wonderful God. I'm asking the Lord, I want you to ask with me. I'm asking the Lord for an encounter with Him that would create an increase in the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may see Him as He is and know Him and interact with Him in a more adequate way. In a more real way that expresses the dimension of a man interacting with God. Because you got, you got bright people that are coming around saying, is there really any God? And they're looking going, okay, well, if there is a God, and these people believe that there is a God, would they be looking like that? Would that be the response? If I believed in a God that they're describing in the Bible, would I look like that interacting with them? They don't believe that there's a God. You have to understand that there's some very bright people who don't believe that you're believe that there's believe that Christians believe that there's really a God. They're going, oh, come on, man. Give me a break. Look at me, Mark. Look at me in my eyes. Come on. You can tell me. Those are good encounters to have with people. Because it makes you have to realize, wait a minute, are we clouded by our own interest? Are we veiled by our own ideas? Are we stuck in our own little, you know? unbelief worlds that we can't begin to interact with the Holy Ghost who will open up our eyes to see Jesus, to begin to come before a living God, before the holies of holies, to enter into a realm right now that is beyond everything that has made <laughs> your, you know, your life sad and bad and unhappy and looking with that look that many people have on their face. It's just kind of like, it's almost, sometimes you look, look at Christians and there's just like this lifeless stare. I have been, I have been in meetings where the power of God was just, I mean, it was, could it be more intense? People sitting there. Just no emotion. How can it be? And then as soon as the meeting's over, they're all animated. <laughs> You're like, what? Why, Father, what's going on there? So we gotta break this barrier. We all have individual responsibility to behave ourselves in spirit and in truth. Because it's all Father wants. And if you want to give Father what He wants, you're going to have to be able to receive what He's, what he's supplied. And so I'm asking Father for a, a breaking forth of Holy Ghost conviction to fall upon us. I could say, oh God, let Holy Ghost conviction fall upon the churches of the United States. Well, the Lord says we have to be first partakers of the fruit. Then you have some authority to do something. If Satan's run right over the top of your head, you have no authority to do nothing. None. If he's able to bring you into bondage of something, if, in other words, if Satan was able to bring you into bondage of condemnation, you'd have no authority to deliver somebody else from condemnation. If Satan was able to bring you into bondage of some kind of fear, you'd have no ability to deliver somebody else from fear. Because you're under his authority. You're under his grip. Satan can't cast out Satan. Oh, Shepaya, Shina Manga Day. I just want to break through here with you tonight. I want to push something through. I want to get you up and get you to boxing around. I want you to get to knocking something out. 
Huh? I want you to get you. I want to get you to pull him something down. Huh? I want you to get serious about it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brosa bele kiste. If you would be willing, you hear me now. If you would be willing to bear the responsibility of representing God, Father would be allowed to work in your life. You listen to me. If you're willing to bear the responsibility of representing God to a world around you, and it may be one or two people, it may be the person sitting beside you in the meeting. I've watched over and again where people have come into the meeting and it's almost like Satan strategically set them up to be around the saddest people in the place. I'm not kidding you. And you can just, and I'm standing, I, just, I get the spot where I'm looking at somebody, I'm looking at somebody looking at this person like this. And then they talk to one another. And I'm going, Lord Jesus. And I'm just like, it's, it's, it's over. The meeting's over. I can't get past a false representation. Unless I just say, hey, the people in front of you don't know the Lord. Or I could say, the people in front of you are oppressed by the devil. Then I could possibly move forward. But then, and then how are we going to recover from the meeting? From that, how are we going to recover in the meeting from that? Because now we got all this stuff going on. Are you with me? Yes. We have to individually bear the responsibility of representing God. We've got to recognize that what's going on in our face is the living report of who we are in God. Read it. And you have to, you have to come and say, do, you, know, you know, or just like hang a sign over your, your neck and it says, checked out. Not in the Holy Ghost, decided not to be in God today, even though I came to church. So we said, I'm just not going to come to the meeting. Okay, good. If that's the way you feel about it, that's the best thing for you to do. And stay home and go just, go, just go ahead and take a nosedive off into the world and get so sin sick that you'll get passionate about God. Because he that loves, he that is forgiven much, loveth much. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, I don't want anybody to do that, but it's time that people quit sitting around the meeting sulking. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Quit people in false representation. There's no real move of God there. There's no real flow of the Holy Ghost there. No, we're going to handle... And somebody said, well, you, it's a flow of the Holy Ghost by what you define. No, it's a flow of the Holy Ghost by what God defines. Yes. Acts chapter 2, rushing mighty wind, clothing, buns of fire, out of your innermost being, rivers of living water. I mean, all this kind of signs and wonders, miracles, demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost, tongues, uh, interpretation, tongues, prophecy. I pour out my spirit upon all flesh, you'll all prophesy. God's description. Joy unspeakable, full of glory, peace, passes, understanding, love that goes beyond all knowledge. God's description. Why? Because I'm because the zeal of the Lord has eaten me up, it's consumed me. I want it, I want what He has in my own life. I'm gonna have what He has in my own life, and I'm gonna demand it. And everyone who says they called on His name, let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. And I'm saying a sad countenance is iniquity. It's the expression of iniquity. Because I'm calling iniquity anomia which is lawlessness. I'm calling iniquity, what God calls it, Greek language is anomia. Nomia is law, to be under the law of God. Nomia. To not be under the law of God is anomia. Anomia is only, can only be translated iniquity or potentially lawlessness. You, or do you understand my, do you understand my reasoning here, my doctrine in God? I'm going to be under the law of the spirit of life. 
that is in Christ Jesus. And I'm not going to be entangled with the yokes of bondage. I'm not going to be crushed down and pushed down and subjugated by oppressive demon spirits with all their lies and fairy tales and imaginations. God's called you and me to cast out devils, not participate with them or give them place to room to occupy or interact with us in our life. And ah, cast them out. We're going to have to, it, by handling the word of truth, by walking in the spirit of life, the lie and the deception and the demonic becomes extremely apparent. You know, and I, I love the analogy of people who count money, handle money, okay? And, it's through, and they tell you that it's through handling the real money that counterfeit money becomes very detectable. Handling the truth. Handling the word of life. Whew. Whew. Can you imagine what it's really like to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? It will absolutely cause you to be full of joy and speak away. It causes you to be ecstatic. You'll be stunned out of your mind. You'll be in awe and sin not. You'll be overwhelmed. You'll be like hair standing up on the back of your neck and, you know, you just knees making fellowship with one another because it's an awesome thing. When Jesus becomes bigger than the crisis of your life, when Jesus becomes bigger than your own imaginations, bigger than your own problems, bigger than your own, your own interests, bigger than your own self-reliance. This is all I'm crying for. I want you to cry, for me, cry this out with me. I want you to plead, plead with God. I want you to ask him. He, you know, today I was just dealing with this. You know, I was just dealing with this. I, I was translating Matthew 15 today and trying to polish things up and the things that God's got me doing. And, you know, it just it was so vivid, vivid there. You know, the Canaanite woman comes to him, and she, first of all, she's crying out after him. It's a woman following him, crying out after him. And the disciples are getting aggravated. You know, Goodness gracious, this woman, ah, you know, crying out after him. Please stop, please. You know, there's a woman crying. And the disciples go, Lord, please tell this lady to get out of here. She's an embarrassment. She's crying out after us. And Jesus said, to her, he said, I'm not sent to any, but to the lost sheep of Israel. She comes down and worships and says, oh, Lord, please help me. I mean, that's just break your heart right there. Oh, Lord, please help me. She's already cried out that her daughter is grievously tormented of the devil. She falls down and worships and says, oh, Lord, please help me. And he turns to her. It's not right for me to give the dog, give to dogs the children's bread. That is shocking. You know his heart's just beating with compassion. I know who he is. You know, he, I, 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 even if they say, you know how many weird times I've read that scripture? I still tear up at it. And, he's, and he says, it's, too, it's not right for me to give the, it's not right for me to give the dog the children's bread. She could have so easily gotten offended. She said, I'll just take a crumb. <laughs> true. She says, true, Lord, but I'll just eat a crumb. Can I have a crumb? He she asked for a crumb. Whoo. Jesus got ecstatic. This is what I'm looking for right here. That's what he says. This is the faith. This is it. If you can put yourself in that context and understand the things and the events and crisis of your life, that actually in many ways play out the same way and you end up offended and miss out on the miracle. And not in the faith, but in unbelief. You'll bring it to a stop. You'll say, and, and praise God, he's the God of the millionth chance. <laughs> hey man, we're just like, yeah, praise God. <laughs> oh Lord Jesus, that your obedience abounded unto many offenses. i am tell you right now, so I said, I'm just gonna give up and do what? And do what? I'm just going to give up. I can't do this. What are you going to go do then instead? I mean, there is no place for us to go. Give up. If there's anybody should be giving up around here, it's God. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and he ain't giving up. What are you talking about? What a lie. <laughs> and by the time you've listened to that voice enough, it can get you. Deception can get you. Huh? You have to hear a lie so many times you believe it's the truth. 
And that's what Satan is, a master, just telling you a lie over and over and over and over again. Satan, a break of power. I render you powerless. In the name of Jesus Christ, your filthy religion, your false representation comes to an end. I cut you off. And that's the way I feel about it. That's the way the Spirit of the Lord stirred me up on the inside about it all. You get stirred up. Most of the issues that you deal with and most of the problems that you confront is because you don't allow the anointing of the Holy Ghost to surge through you. Most of the things that you can't get fixed in your life and that continue to go on is because you've not dealt with them in the Spirit and the issue is not between you and somebody else, it's between you and God. And you get that straightened out. And you begin to lay hold on God. Yeah, there's something going on on the other side of the earth. You'll be able to break the power of it. Hallelujah. Much more in your home. And in the situations that surround you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Everybody stand with me. Let's sing the song you're singing. Let's sing it. Jesus, Jesus, more of Jesus, all of Jesus, and none Where are the words? of me. Where are the words at? Got the words? Jesus, Jesus, more. Jesus, Jesus, more of Jesus, all of Jesus, none of me. There are no words. Jesus, Jesus, more of Jesus, all of Jesus, and none of me. Jesus, Jesus, more of Jesus, all of Jesus, and none of me, because I'm dwelling in Dwelling in the vine, I'm dwelling in the vine, dwelling in the vine, I'm dwelling in the vine, dwelling in. Jesus, Jesus, more of Jesus, all of Jesus, and none of me. Jesus, Jesus, more of Jesus, all of Jesus, and none of me, because I'm dwelling in the vine. I'm dwelling in the vine. Yes, I'm dwelling in the
take all of me, Lord. You can have all of me, Lord. Whatever you ask of me, Lord, <laughs> I will do, Lord. I will follow you.
dwelling in the vine, dwelling in the vine, his abundant life, dwelling in
Kara Sharaba Mabara Rabasi Rebebea, Vasaya, Batataya, Ukurusogana Bebea, Shurana Mamanaki, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Jesus, I must decrease. Jesus, Jesus, oh, mama, mama, give her, mama, 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 Just lift your hands towards heaven. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Zere be 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 le be kisho to lo lo bo ro bo be 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 le be le be na mandero. Zoro be 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 kisha la ba be be le he. Zoro ma mandela be be pro ma mandela. Zee shoro bo ko to lo mo be pro bo ni na la la ma berin. Zere ma mangi le be be pisho to ro mo be 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 le. Your glory now, O God. Your glory now, O Lord. Your glory now, O God. Your glory. Your glory now, O Lord. Your glory now, O God. Your glory now, O Lord. Your glory. Reveal your son in me. Reveal your son in me. Reveal your son, O oh God. Reveal your son in me. Reveal your son in me. Let your rivers flow freely. I let your rivers flow freely, 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 freely. Hallelujah! Woohoo! I let your rivers flow freely. I let your rivers flow freely. Freely through me. Again, just a little, play the keyboards right there. I'll let your rivers flow freely. I'll let your rivers flow freely. Freely through me. Now, I want you to picture yourself living out your life tomorrow and from this time forward, ready, ready, ready to give to every person who has need, ready, ready, ready to be directed by the Holy Ghost. You can't be directed by the Holy Spirit when you're set on doing your, when you're set on doing your business. You're going to have to be willing to do the things that you need to do in this life, in the day-to-day -day existence, in the context of doing Father's business, doing the kingdom business. So I want you just to manage this. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be natural. You're not going to try to do it. You're not going to have to do it out of your own human ability or effort. But it's literally going to just be just like Jesus' ministry. I'm going to tell you right now. People came to find Jesus. Are you listening to me? All you have to do is begin. All you have to do is begin to live your life before the Father in such a way the Father knows that you're ready 
to allow His glory to flow through you, and He's going to bring people to you. As long as you're offline, there's no reason for Father to bring people to you. He's going to go find somebody else to take them to you. I want you to I want you to come now and begin to think of so hooking up with God in His purpose and His plan that He can now begin to develop you in such a way that He can fulfill His work of faith with power through you. I want you to recognize that everything's put in place. Father's got everything in place. I mean, it's all in place. The TNT is set. The cable is being rolled out, so to speak. Everything's in place. It's all fixed up. All I got to do is, all, all that's ready is to hook it up and blow it. There's just a, this small adjustment that we've got to be willing to make. All we have to do is stand back and watch God begin to do the work through us. What does that fundamentally mean? It means that you need to be filled up. How easy is that? That easy right there. To be filled Just be Just be filled right now. How easy is that? Now, touching heaven. Let me just let me begin to let me begin to real qu quickly just encapsulate this best I possibly can. We begin to touch heaven. We begin to lay out our lives before the Lord. Hey, listen. I, I, I believe I probably speak in tongues more than you all. But I'm going to tell you right now, when I begin to talk with Father about these things and touch heaven, I do so in a realm as I begin to lay out the plan of God. Father, I know what you want to do with my life today. Father, I ask you to give me the capacity that your Son might be revealed to me, that the authority of heaven might be man manifest through my life. I begin to bring the situations, the need, this, this, the changes that need to take place. Just begin to bring them before the throne of grace and begin to ask Father for the outpouring of His power and His Spirit through me. And it caused me to understand how to hook up with that outpouring, how to hook up with that which He wants to do. I begin to ask Father to create divine appointments for me to be aware for, so that I can be aware of that which He set me up to do and that which He's purposed me to do. I begin to thank Him for His word of knowledge and His word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, the working of miracles, gifts of healing, gift, gift of faith. And as you just begin to walk this out, as you begin to pray this thing out, I'm talking about this is how you get ready to go. I'm talking about, I'm asking you to come and engage in this that the Lord wants to do. I'm asking you to give God the Holy Ghost permission to bless you. I'm asking you to give God the Holy Ghost permission to lead your life. It isn't so much the length of it, it's the depth of it. And the more that you'll do these things, the deeper it will go. I'm not talking about you getting down on your knees and sobbing about your problems and being all caught up in the circumstances of your life and wondering why you're such a miserable mess. We're not talking about that. And I pray that nobody does that. I'm talking about you taking your position in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, taking the responsibility upon your shoulders to represent Jesus in this life, Recognizing it's the Father's will and coming into an agreement with Him. Coming, letting your spirit be, be aligned with that which the Holy Ghost is doing. It's literally giving Father permission. Now, if you'll do that, you'll be ready. You're, now you're walking out the life of Jesus. Father will bring people to you. You'll see somebody who's sick and disease. You'll see somebody hurting in pain. It'll just happen. You'll see somebody who's ready to receive the gospel, you know, you know. It isn't a waste of time. It's not a distraction. Sometimes we get so busy trying to make sure that we're punching a t religious time card. You know what I'm so saying? I mean, we're not listening to the Holy Ghost. We're just going to run headlong into something. It's, you know, we need to see people's lives transformed by the power of the living God. Only the Holy Ghost has the capacity to do it. And God's people are going to have to understand this. Now, I know that many of you are confined. You're put into a little box every day and you've got to go there work like you know a little slave in your cubicle but the lord you know you got a lunch time and that's only eight hours a day huh that you can get out you can move around a bit okay go shopping for your wife if you don't go shopping if you're stuck in an office all day get get the lord opportunity to use you do prayer walks around your neighborhood Huh? Just, just begin, you know, walk around the grocery store praying. 
Yeah, there's no some problem for you to just instead of looking for whatever it is you're looking for, just kind of stare, but praying. Oh, God, Father, I thank you right now that you're going to bring an outpouring of your presence in this place. The people are going to come under Holy Ghost conviction. Anybody touches this box of cereal right here. <laughs> I mean, just, you know, come on, man. If you get active, Father's going to look at that. You look at that. They're active. Somebody's serious about having a, having a rushing mighty wind. If we're, otherwise, what's going to happen is we're going to become overwhelmed. We'll become overwhelmed. We've got all this to do. How are we going to ever get it done? And you're going to fish all night, catch nothing. Are you listening to me? Here's what Father's going to do. I see it. I see it in spirit. Father's going to bring forth a great explosion of his power and of his presence to every person's life who's been hungering and thirsting, who's been giving themselves to this way, who's just walking around, oh, God, use me. Lord, I won't be barren and unfruitful. Father, I, I'm, giving, I'm giving myself to being led by, by you, Holy Spirit. I give myself to being led by you. I can't do this. I don't know where to start. I don't have the capacity to help anyone. I don't know anything that I'm supposed to do. I don't know how to do it. Only you know how to do it, Lord. And I thank you that you're going to do it through me. I thank you for the rivers that you've given me. Hallelujah. The rivers of your presence. Praise your holy name. You need to talk to Papa. You need to talk to him about the things that he's supplied. You need to, you, you encourage yourself. You build yourself up this way as well. By putting, by just bringing yourself into remembrance of these things. Just talking about all the Father's purpose to do with you. Father, I don't want to be trapped forever here doing this one little activity of putting this one little peg in this hole for the rest of my life. I want you to send me to the nations. I want you to use me. I want you to send me to people around me. I want you to use me to bless my family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Is it on right now? Can you hear me? I can't hear I can't hear me up here. I can hear me out there. Paul said, wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy. Paul previously said in Colossians that we should walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called. The reality that we are purposed by God to represent Jesus in this earth. It's a powerful thing. God would count you worthy and I believe that we find something happening here when we, we recognize, wait a minute, I've given myself to that which Father has purposed me to, to do. I want this more than anything else. This is, my, this is my desire, this is my passion, this is my hunger, this is my thirst. This is all that I want, His will to be done in my life. I believe that that is the, that that is the atmosphere, that that's the condition, the state of our heart where we're in God counts us worthy. We just want to be about the Master's business. We want, the, we want the expressions of divine power and glory to be seen through our life. We want Jesus to be glorified. We, every one of us, we're separated from my mother's womb so that Jesus would be revealed in us. Paul said, Jesus separated me from my mother's womb that he might reveal his son in me. This is ours. It's ours right now. It's ours. Just, just lift your hands towards heaven and say, Lord, I just thank you that this is mine. Just like whisper it. Just whisper it. Just, just, Lord Jesus, I thank you this is mine. Oh God. I, I believe the only way that the Lord would not count us worthy is that our heart's not in it. We're busy with our other stuff. We can live without it. If it happens, it happens, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. I believe that that's the only thing that disqualifies us. Dear people, if we press in, if we don't, if we don't worry in well-doing, we shall reap if we faint not. This is Father's promise. He will, he will fulfill all of His good pleasure and His work of faith with power. 
God, that God, oh God, would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness. And the work of faith with power. Don't you just, can you, can you just feel that? Don't you just want to lay hold on that? Lord, we just, we want to lay hold on that. Listen tonight, if there's any of you who've had any complaint or any animosity against any other person in this place, I want you to repent of it. I want you to get rid of it because I want the Holy Ghost to have freedom to do what he wants to do in this place and he can't work over top of that mess. People think that God can work over top of sin. He cannot. What he does is he calls us to a place of repentance. Father is looking to express his glory in this place. Father is looking to express his glory in the midst of the church. And you and I have the opportunity of participating with God. We, haven't, we, we are actually positioned right now in a very good position before the Lord. Maybe, maybe in many respects ahead of others. Just because of, of where we come from, just because of who we are, just because of the kind of messages that are continually preached in here, just because of our unwillingness to have nonsense going on. If you can recall to mind anyone in this place that has been doing things that you would qualify as, as an act of violation against the body of Christ, where they're talking bad about someone or bringing reproach against someone, you need to go to them and you tell them they need to stop it. If you've actually participated with it, don't wait for somebody to come to you and tell you you need to stop that. You need to go and just repent to anyone who's heard it. In the, in, the, in the Bible, both the person, in the Word of God in the Old Testament, both the person who did a wrong act and those who were witnesses to it were equally guilty. And, and people really, what we're talking about is we're talking about the masses of people in the United States of America and in Southern California, they've never seen the glory. They've never seen the love. They've never seen the power of God's goodness displayed where people are healed. Signs and wonders and miracles take place. Where the love of God is being made manifested. Where the life of God has come to earth. Where it stays in heaven upon the earth. We, 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 whew, whew. we have positioned right now. We have positioned for a great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Who, does it, who would not want to be a part of this? And could you imagine people excluding themselves just because they got a complaint or some attitude against somebody else because, and really their perception is about 99% wrong anyways when the truth be told? Oh, mighty God. Did you know that the Lord wants to honor you? Did you know that the Lord wants to honor you? How many of you know that the Lord wants to honor you? Do you know that if you dishonor someone else, you disqualify him from honoring you? I'll say it again. Do you know that if you dishonor someone else, you disqualify yourself from him honoring you? Think about it. Father, in who he is in, re in, in, in relationship to who we are, is willing to honor us with all of our problems and shortcomings and, you know, frailty and, you know, immaturity he's willing to honor us with all of his glory he honors us to bring us into a greater maturity in him and then we're going to look across at our neighbor that is no or our brother and sister even worse who in re re respect is really you know if we see a problem actually we're more messed up than they are you know what i'm saying and find a fault, because if we can look at a brother or a sister and find fault with them, we're actually more messed up than they are. Because the person who finds fault is far more messed up than the person who's being faulted. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
And then with that kind of dishonor within that realm of relationship, it disqualifies us from what Father wants to do in our lives. Mm -mm -mm. The Lord makes it such a big deal that he, he, he brings it right down to the very communion table and the most intimate expression and the most amazing expression of living by his, his body that was broken for us, living by the blood that was shed for our sins. And he makes it clear. He makes it very clear. If there's any unforgiveness, if, there's, if anyone does, dishonors the body, they fail to recognize the body of Christ. He brings it down in some pretty intense judgment. Let's just do this. Let's just stand in this place right now and, and allow God the Holy Ghost to bring His Holy Ghost conviction, to bring His conviction, His instruction, His insight to our lives. And let's repent for attitudes. Let's repent right now. For there is no justifiable reason to point the finger at anybody for any cause because you've done just as bad as not worse. You know what I'm saying to you? I hope you do. I, that's why I'm praying the Holy Ghost give you conviction so he's the only one who can show you. Don't do that ever again. I want this thing to be healed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let us be perfectly joined together in love. So the body being knitted together in love may increase. May make increase of itself. The Spirit of the Lord has purposed that we grow up into Him. Listen to this. That we grow up into Him in all things. Now, this is is a very act. This, this, by doing this, it's the very act of pressing in. See, he just wanted to think that it's just words, that with words. But the prophet said, the prophet Isaiah said, you draw near unto me with your mouth and, you, and with your lips, you honor me, but your heart is far from me. And then the deeds and the action of what you're committed to do is far from me. We don't ever want to run the risk of that because there's too many people that are actually repeating that and doing that. So we know that if we give ourselves to, to laying hold of doing it exactly the way the Father has called us to do it, we give ourselves to it and we will not allow anything else, that that is the very act of pressing in to that realm of cooperating with Him so that all the things that He wants to do in our lives and through our lives. It's going to blow you away. When God starts moving, you're going to be, you're going to, you're going to be the first one to collapse and go, I, I, I don't even believe what's happening. And so I'm, a, I'm just going to help you get to the place. Um, we want to impart wisdom unto you so that you can get to the place of having that shocking moment. <laughs> obey God. Whether you understand it or not, obey God. Let, God says it very clearly, let there be no divisions among you. God makes it very clear. He's telling us, if you want me to do the things that I purpose to do in your life, these are the conditions that must be met. These are the things that you must be committed to doing. And it's really that easy. It isn't more, any more difficult than that. Here we just walk in this, we walk in this wonderful love of the Holy Ghost and we press in to this outpouring of His power and of His presence through our lives. And we live it. We don't wait for another day. We live it. So tomorrow I wake up in the morning, I'm saying, okay, Holy Spirit, all I, wanted, all I want my life to consist of is a divine revelation of your power. I want no affinity to this world. If I've got affinity to this world, if I've got an affinity to the rich guys or affinity to the hippies or affinity to this, or affinity, forget about it. There's a mixture. I want no affinity to anything in this world. Or any culture in this world, you don't want any affinity to it. You want your, you want your whole heart 
raptured into another culture called the culture of the kingdom of God where you're now in power because otherwise if you've got an affinity to it, you're going to bow to it. You're going to give it dominance over you. You're going to you're give, give it a power to impress you, influence you, sway you. You're not hooked up. When you, something else is influencing you and swaying you, you've now disconnected with the power of God. You must understand what I'm saying because, and God give you wisdom because I'm telling you, until these things are straight and settled in our heart, and this is a big part of the process, we never get to begin to move into that dimension which Father has purposed us to live in and enjoy that ultimately blesses the nations around us. So you guys went in and you prayed for your, your aunt. Is she awake? Your aunt? Uh, I didn't get a call back. You didn't get a call back, but you guys went and prayed for her. Yes. Okay, so what's up? It's a done deal, ain't it? Or is it a question mark? Is it a question mark or a done deal? Okay, that, listen, God's called us to do these things. Leave the results to him. Now there's a pressing in of prayer laying hold on things. There's nothing wrong with that. There's pressing in until you see, there's no problem with pressing in until you see the results. But we just want to know about the results all the way, all the, all the way through the process of pressing in. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Is everybody's heart right? Is everybody's heart right in this place? Anybody hold something against another person? Just let it go then. You just let it go. Only one person has any problem in the house. The fact of it is, is I know that's not true. I just, I know that's not true. It's like one person was willing to raise their hand. Because I know the Holy Ghost is moving. I know the Holy Spirit is moving because I asked him to. I said, Holy Spirit, bring Holy Ghost conviction and let people say, I don't want anybody making anything up. I'm just, I just want it to just, I want the honesty because you can hide if you want, but you can think you hide, but you're not hiding. You, you need to release it. You need to release it. You need to release it. You can say, well, I know so-and-so did such and such. You don't know what they did. You don't know what was behind what they did. You're looking at it through the lens of your perception and the limited concept of what you think you know. Watch it. Stop it. Don't do that. Now you cut yourself off from divine knowledge. Well, I know for sure. No, you don't know anything for sure. You listen to me. There is not a person on this planet that knows anything for sure. God knows things for sure. The rest is, it, it's, it's just tainted with your perception. I'm just going to wait a few more minutes. This is this, I'm going to, I want to deal with this thing because I know what Father wants to do and I don't want anybody left out. They're pretty simple to understand. I don't want anybody left out. Can I, maybe I should put it another way. Is there anyone in here you're not willing to submit yourself to? And put it that way. Then you need to just let that thing go. And I'm talking about submit on the level of serve. Then you just need to let that thing go. Now, I have spirit knowledge about some things here. And I have also natural knowledge about some things here. And I want to make sure that this thing is settled here tonight before we leave. And I don't want to call out names because then all of a sudden, you know, then all of, you know, you're not responding to the Holy Ghost, you're responding to me. You know, I heard somebody say I was correcting someone, someone I heard someone say, Oh, aren't you embarrassed? 
You better watch yourself. You talk about God. You're talking against the things of the Spirit. You're, you're, you're basically saying God's unfair. If I rebuke something or if I, if I correct something, the Lord's going to back me up, and I do it out of a strong unction. And if you've got a problem with me, you have a problem with him. You're saying he's unfair. You're saying he's rude because I'm not here on my own. And, and we kind of have to get this right because if we don't honor the authority, if we don't honor what God is doing, he can't do more until we're willing to get it right. We're going to have to get this thing right. I, once again, I believe everything is in place. I believe the powder keg's ready. It, it, I mean, it's just everything's ready to go. I believe we're in a position more than other churches to have a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit because of the foundation that's here. But things have still got to be right. I'm just going to give this a few more minutes. I believe that offense is one of Satan's most effective strategies to stop the outpouring of the Holy Ghost and the move of the Spirit through people's lives. It's not anything else. It's not the movie that you went to. Huh? It's not the television program that you watch. It's not the ham that you ate. You know, whatever. All the religious stuff. It's, it's like straining at a gnat and swallowing a whole camel. Spirit of offense. Did you know that if you pass up a meeting like tonight and do not repent and let go of the thing, that the spirit of offense will have greater right to control you for the rest of your life because you choose to hide in the pride of life and not deal with it? Did you know that? If you didn't, you know it now. Or at least you've heard it, whether you believe it or not, because a lot of times when people walk in a spirit of offense against leadership, they can't hear nothing that's going being said. They've broken covenant. And so we have many people that sit in churches that aren't right with God because they're not right with their brothers and their sisters in Christ. You can't say you love God when you don't like your brother or your sister. Scripture says, well, hey, well, God doesn't know dislike. God doesn't know any difference between hate and dislike. It's either love or hate. It's either the love like God loves us with or it's hate. Do you understand what I'm telling you tonight? You understand what we've been talking about since the beginning of this service? This service was specifically designed for a number of people in this place tonight. And you can't walk out of here after hearing God speak like this and in any way think that you can be justified in any way, any stretch of the imagination, even if somebody did the most worst violation and evil against you that can be imagined. And ain't nobody done that. And no one done that. And let me just say this. One person's wrong attitude shared with another person is like a disease. It's like tuberculosis. It's not only like tuberculosis, it's like the plague. You now, not only do you have a problem, but you've now diseased someone else with your problem, and so your sin has now become someone else's sin, and you are spreading evil. It's like murder. That's what the Lord says. He says, hate's the sin of murder. And now you got murder in your heart because you dislike. And now you've made other people accompanying to your murder. I've actually heard it said, God forbid that it's true, that it's unimaginable that you would have Pastor Mark as your leader, spiritual leader that you would look to. That's pretty radical, ain't it? So if someone says that about anybody in this leadership, they said it about me. And if someone said, any, said it about me, they said it about my father. 
they said about Lord Jesus. Because he said, whatever they do to you, they do to me. Now, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a little bit more time because this is what the whole meeting is about tonight. It's breaking the yoke of this thing. I want to break the yoke of this thing. I'm going to break the back of this demonic power. I'm going to break the back of this demonic power. Because it will destroy your soul in hell. Let me just tell you right now. It will cause you to bend over more and more and more. And you will be crippled by it, inflicted by it, and you will die in it. And everything around you will fall apart and be destroyed because of the evil of the thing. It's a plague. You would know if it was a plague, right? You would know if it was an advanced stage of tuberculosis where you're puking blood. You'd everybody be scared. Oh, no, what am I going to do to get rid of this? But it's spiritually, it's just as bad. Spiritually, it's just as bad. It's absolutely just as bad. It just said, because it's sight unseen, we can justify it and we can just put it off and not be, we don't have a reality of God. We don't have a reality of spiritual consequences. We don't know truly. We haven't dealt with the reality of the wages of sin is death. It isn't a fearful thing to us. It needs to be. It needs to be. God, the Holy Ghost, wants to make it that way. <laughs> Father God wants to make Holy Ghost conviction such that the fear of the Lord is there and you're terrified of sin and iniquity. One of the great moments of maturation is you no longer justify anything. If it's wrong, it's wrong. For every reason. And you can never justify it. You can never say, well, they did or she did or he did or this happened or that happened or I feel this way about it because of such and such a thing and because somebody told me. Oh, well, that's hearsay. Ooh. Hearsay is worse than all of it. I mean, hearsay, to, to act and to move and to, to be in bondage over hearsay, don't believe hearsay. Shut down hearsay. As soon as someone says to you something about someone else, you say, Stop right here. We're going to go right now and go talk to them. Just do that. They're going to, you'll watch people start backpedaling. Oh, no, no, it's just going to be strife. No, we're going to go do it right now. We're going to, you're coming with me. We're going to go talk to them right now about it. Strife or no strife, we're going to put this thing right to rest right now. Then you shut the devil down because Satan, demonic power cannot function in the light. It's shut down. We want, we want you to walk in divine health. We want you to be blessed all your days. We want everything about your life to be overwhelmed with the goodness of God, but it can't be if you allow these things, sin and iniquity, be in your life. I love reading Job. I read it over and over and over again. I've just been in, I just can't get out of Job. Why? Because the doctrine is so good. Much of it's misapplied, but the doctrine is so good. If you read it, you'll find out over and again, they knew you don't mess around with God. You don't mess around with God's people and God's things and get blessed. You have to do things right if it's going to be right. We have to do things. See, the Lord's empowered us to do things right. Huh? The Lord hasn't empowered us to do things wrong. He hasn't said, okay, you know what? You're all a bunch of idiots, so go ahead and do whatever's wrong, and I'm going to go ahead and make you right. He's... he's he empowered us to do what's right. Hallelujah. He's bara. He barad us, created us. Yitzar, he shaped us, shaped us. And bana, he built us. And he continues to build us, build us up, mature us. But we can't stop along the way and justify wrongdoing. I want you to send spirit of offense away right now in Jesus' name. I want you to send the spirit of offense away right now in Jesus' name. If you've got a problem with anyone at all, it's a spirit of offense. If you feel like you've been done wrong, it's a spirit of offense. Send it away. I didn't say speak in tongues. I said send it away. Send the spirit of offense away. Say, spirit of offense, you have no right over me. 
I send you away. In Jesus' name. You need to serve unforgiveness and notice that it has no right to dominate your mind. I want everybody to come down out of the back. Just point the camera this way, it'll be fine. says tonight the Lord would like to have us would like for us to have communion spiritual communion so the Lord wants don't hide from God let him examine your heart he's not come to condemn he's come to make us right but he cannot make us right if we don't repent. So he says, you're condemned. When we don't repent, he says, you're condemned. He said, if you would have just said that you need help, you would have been freed. If you'd have simply said you're blind, then you'd be able to see. But because you say you see, you don't need any help. You're blind. You remain in your sin. Why would anybody want to do that? Why would anyone so self justify? It will, it will cause you to go completely mentally insane. In this context, you can't mess with the Holy Ghost. The real genuine Holy Ghost is in this place. You can't mess with him. When he's talking to you, you want to respond. You want to get right. You want to interact with him. You want to meet with God in this place. You're meeting with God in this place. And it's about time people step over into the realm of faith where they come in here and they're not just mixing it up with men. They're meeting with God. And until the faith is where you're meeting with God, you'll never encounter His manifest presence. It will always be nothing but earthly and Satan will always have an advantage on you. But when all of a sudden this is about God and it's about the reality of His presence, hallelujah, and you take everything from it that is earth realm and you just kind of and you just live over in heavenly realm. Ho, oh, things getting gonna get things gonna get good. Things are gonna get good. I don't want my I don't want the offering baskets to have been stood in for nothing. Now that they all torn up from standing in them. Father saw you do it. Father saw you stand in an offering basket. You have no right. You have no ownership over your life. You have no right to disagree with God. None. If it's declared in His Word and He speaks it to us in His Word, it's settled forever. That's what you are demanded to do. All I'm doing is declaring what God said. He said, if you forgive from your heart those that trespass against you, what, God will, do, what will God do? He forgive you. If you do not forgive those who trespassed against you, and there's people who carry a spirit of offense and no one even trespassed against them. They just carry a spirit of offense. And then no anybody, because you, you, you take them, you say exactly what happened and you're going to get some little stupid, silly little thing. It's not even a trespass. So the reality of it is, is you actually trespass against the other person and still can't contain... Would, would, and they didn't trespass against you. You trespassed against them by bringing them into question and violating them and who they are and speaking evil against them and bringing into reproach who they are and taking away their honor and thus have a spirit of offense that holds you in prison. And it's the same, it's almost on the same level of being demon possessed. It's almost on the same level. It's a demon oppression that will lead to a demon possession. It will lead. Oppression usually leads to, at least to depression. Some form of depression. That many times, and especially if you resist the Holy Ghost, will lead to possession. 
And then you're deceived and you can't ever get out of it. People, just run to Jesus. Just run to Jesus. Understand, we're pleading with you on several levels. Number one, we're pleading with you for you. Number two, we're pleading with you for the church. I want everybody in this place to vow to, to God and, and agree with me that you receive no evil report against another brother or a sister. And that you'll listen to nothing that brings into reproach in any way anyone else. He will not tolerate it. Just don't tolerate it. No one comes and tells me any bad thing about anybody. Because I'm all be on them. I said, what? Are you? Huh? And I pray in Jesus' name you have the same anointing. Hallelujah. Come, I'll set that at And of course, anybody who does come and bring something, report to me. Because, you know, we have people in ministry around. And as soon as I find out something, anyone knows. If I find out something, I'm on the phone immediately within five minutes what's going on now what are you doing now you get yourself right I mean I just had to do it just a couple of days ago what are you doing now what are you talking about now and because um, that's the way it's supposed to be that's what Papa says Matthew chapter 18 is an important understanding see if we'll just follow God we'll have his results if we'll demand of ourselves those things which God demands of us, we'll have His blessing. If we demand and rule and guide the church according to that which He has commanded, recognizing the sacredness of it and the beauty of it, and we don't allow it, get, I'm taking my belt off. You know, one guy said, you know, he came when he was a real young person with, I think it was either with Ruth Yen or Elizabeth, I can't remember. He says, the one thing he remembers is when the preacher pulled his belt off. <laughs> I pulled my belt off because I'm telling you right now, what I'm talking about right now was even more rampant in the place. Most of those people left with their devils. They aren't here anymore. They left. They're gone. And they, you know, they can say whatever they want to say about how God moved them on. I'm telling you right now. They're going to face it the day of judgment. Because I know exactly what happened. I know exactly why they left. And all the excuses on earth ain't going to change nothing. Because I saw it coming. I watched it. But I'm going I'm to just demand things. I don't care what anybody says. I, I'm going to demand what God demands. And if you can prove me wrong in the Scripture, I'll repent. Oh, you can't demand that of us. You can't demand of us to love one another. You can't demand of us not to speak evil against each other. You can't demand of us such, you know, stringent way of living where we can't talk bad about someone or where we got to rebuke somebody if they speak evil of another. Because that's all the Word of God. The Word is, this is a plain written Word of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm a rule in the house of God. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> and it should be a delight to everyone. Yeah. Now I command sickness and disease go out of your body as well. I command sickness and disease go out of your body. Weakness of the, weakness of the body. I command you in the name of Jesus to be strong in your inner being. Be strong. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be strengthened by the Spirit. Be strengthened by the Holy Ghost. I know things might seem a little quiet tonight, but I'm going to tell you right now, you have a divine encounter to, so you can discover that you wake up in the morning with the ability to walk around and just be who God's called you to be without trying so hard without making it so difficult and such a challenge and such a burden. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what it's like. It's like you just walk down the street and all of a sudden you get this tractor beam. <laughs> and you can't resist. you got to go talk to this person. And it's entirely different because you've got such boldness and confidence. Compassion so overwhelms you for them, you know. It ain't about all this other nonsense going on in the in the realms of the self and natural mind. You just like walk over, practically give them a hug, say, listen, you know what? How, you know, it's like God all of a sudden touches you and you see somebody say, how long are you going to resist the Holy Ghost? And it shocked people, you know, because the Lord will give you stuff like that. You've been running from God for too long now. 
And you know you have. You know exactly what is everything I'm saying is true. And it doesn't take long and they're sobbing like a baby when God does that. Because it's just, and you're having fun, and they're getting delivered, and this is just the ministry of Jesus, and there's no pressure, and you're not having to, you know, refer to the flashcards. You know, shaking, and no, you know, I'm not, I don't do this very often, and I'm very self conscious. Not shaking under the anointing, but under intimidation. The Lord just wants us to follow Him. Look at how He did it. He went out and got full of the Holy Ghost, then went out. That's what he did. That's what he did. Whew. He went out, returned in the Spirit of the Lord. Like I said, let's, let's just agree together that when we come into the meeting, it's like we're going up into the mountain of God. Let's just agree that when we come into the meeting, it's going to be another dimension of, of, of an encounter with the Lord so we can just get so filled up to just go out. And just ah, be so strengthened and so so undergirded by God that all the things of temptation in the world can't even touch us. And we're just living over here in this place of divine authority. We cast out devils and lay hands on the sick and set people free and minister the good word of God in a real genuine way. Hallelujah. For us, I bow today. I'll tell you what Philip stood up here and said the other night. It's true. There's a world going to come into place. It's just going to happen. I'm in expectation for it. I see it. I feel it. The Lord just wants us to prepare ourselves for a meeting. Do you reckon that, it's, that, that, that that's right? That if we should be so honored by the Lord that he would do some unlimited things like this. I know I need to let you go. I'm just keeping here too long. Just... Is it already that late? What is wrong with people's clocks in here? You set your watch like two hours in advance. No. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord Jesus, Jesus, Lord to me. Ah, you're my master, my savior. You're the prince of peace, ruler of my soul, ruler of my heart today, Lord Jesus. Lord to me, oh Jesus, Jesus, oh Lord to me, Master, Savior, oh Master, Savior, Prince of Peace, Prince a peace ruler of my heart a ruler of my heart today jesus oh jesus lord to Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> this is how I get filled up. This is how I get empowered by God to be overwhelmed by his compassions, moved by his mercies, filled with his love, to speak by his power with his authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, living God. Thank you, living God. Amen. Just get so filled up that you don't leave me to shouting on my own.
Okay, just believe God that you'll outrun everybody in the race and shout louder than anyone in the place. I tell you, when I see somebody doing something more than I'm doing in the kingdom, I set myself to pick up the pace. But you know, I can't keep up with my wife running right now because she's been consistently running. She'd just take off, man. She just leaves us all in the dust. And so what I've decided to do, you know, is, and it's because I've been running, I've been sedimentary, doing a bunch of studying and, you know, not giving myself to that. So I said, okay, well, I'm gonna, I'll, you watch what I'm gonna do now. And so I'm getting out there, I'm starting to pick up the pace here. I'm going to run that race. I'm going to run with her right alongside of her. I don't care how steep the mountain is and how fast she's going. And I'm telling you right now, she, when, she, when, she hits that, when she hits that second mile and she hasn't backed down off her pace, and then that third mile and she's still got the same pace, you've got you to you train when you haven't been running. And it's painful in the natural. It hurts. You're like, <gasps> And your bones and your joints are aching. <gasps> As you're gasping for some air. <laughs> you know, you can't really back. I look back on the times where I could, you know, just take off and run six miles and no problem. And, you know, you can either live in that. Oh, yeah, I used to, but I used to get that. And you could live in that if you want. But I'm not going to be yesterday's man. All right? Come on. So you just go, you just do what you got to do. You set yourself to it. You fix yourself. You set yourself to it. That's all it takes. And when you do, come hell or high water, it doesn't matter. Because you set yourself. You fix yourself. If you don't set yourself and fix yourself, you're going to be pot. You're going to be tossed. You're going to be moved with circumstances. You know, oh, the pain's too much. You fixed. I don't care about no pain. Doesn't matter. You set yourself. If you haven't fixed yourself and set yourself, then you'll bow to the pain. You say, ah, oh, there's too much. I'm going to walk. You, you can see, you can see I'm like a little hobbly tonight because I've been, I've been working on it. I'm fixed. I fixed myself on this thing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, you know what I'm saying? My wife beat me in tennis today. I played as hard as I could. Am I going to say, well, forget about it. I'm not playing anymore. I'm going to I'm tell you right now, I'm taking her down. I'm fixed. I'm fixed. Wife or no wife, she's going down. No, it's just the same way. It's the same thing in the spirit. I mean, where is the courage? Where is the courage? Where is the, where is the courage? Where is the purpose? It's like I say all the time, I'm going to conquer the world without any ambition. Because it isn't about ambition. It's about submission. It's about a passion because I love him. I just, and the more you interact with him, the more you love him. Huh? The more you interact with him, the more you understand how much he loves you. you know, he's not disappointed. Hallelujah. And we don't make it works. It doesn't become works oriented where we got to do it. He fills us up with it. That's the beauty of it. It's like, wow, this is truly organic. This is, I'm feeling this, man. I'm feeling this. I want to do this. Get out of my way. I'm going to do this at whatever the cost. Amen. It's like Phil said. He said it so perfect when he, when he referred to Livingston. It's never a sacrifice to serve a king. It's a privilege. Wow. Wow. Come on, man. Let's all get into the privilege around here, okay? And, it, and you know, I want you to worship the Lord with any of your offerings. If you didn't, if you haven't given of the Lord of your tithes, if you haven't honored your Lord with the tithes, you better do it because you're not going to be blessed until you do. I'm telling you right now, it's not a law. It is a relationship. It was not founded in law. It was founded in relationship. Abraham is before law. It's relationship. Make sure you keep good books with God. If your books are wrong, one time Ann and I got behind. We had to do payment plan. We had to do a payment plan to catch up. We had just things were going on in our life. And, but, you know, praise God for the payment plan. We caught up. <laughs> and then we said, look, and for now on, it's just they're getting behind for no reason. 
So worship the Lord with you, giving. Find a bunch of people around you, hug them, tell them that you love them. The more you participate with love, the use it. Don't hug those that you just know. Hug those that you're a little stranger to. I'm going to tell you, I got, a, I got a bird's eye view of watching the same people hug the same people over and again. Hug somebody you ain't hugged for a while. 